All right, listener, what's up? Thanks for pressing play on this episode of the Jock and Nerd Podcast, and we've got a very different, unique show for you. This week, one of our amazingly interesting and talented listeners, Adam Morris, who is a legit scientist, Terrific. joins us on the show to help guide us as we geek out about the science of superheroes, all in this edition of the Jock and Nerd Weekly for Friday, February 24th, 2017. You young Turks think you know everything. Check. Check one. All right. This is really fans out there. Let's give it up. We chop it. We nerd it. We funny. Disturb it. We chop it. We nerd it. We spoil it. Alert. Oh yeah, that's right, we jockin' and nerdin'. Welcome to the Jockin' and Nerd Podcast, listener. My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the jock! He's the nerd. Jockin' and nerd! And we're your hosts for this geek-tastic audio experience. Joining us, of course, is... Everyone's favorite felty American. You know him. You love him. Rugberto Bambino, but his friends called him Rug Boy. What's up, Rugs? What's up, dudes? How's it going? Good earth to you. And also joining us, this is very, I'm very excited to have this uh, guest with us on the show. If you've seen the title, listener, we're going to be talking about the science of superheroes. We have another listener turned podcast guest and honest to goodness science guy, Adam Morris. Adam, how's it going? Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. It's going very well. Thank you guys very much for having me. I, uh, I've been looking forward to this for a while. Oh, my God. This is going to be great. And I'm going to try to embarrass you here because all really, listener, I have to do to intro Adam Adam is read his email signature, which, uh. which goes like this. Ad, just listen closely for the keywords. Adam D. Morris, Ph.D., postdoctoral fellow. At Carleton University in the Department of Chemistry, Ottawa, Ontario. Oh, shit. oh my Oh my god, Adam, you're Whoa. way too smart to be on the show. Uh that's amazing. I hope I didn't embarrass you too much, but if I did, good. That's the game I like to play. <laughs> it's great because now I know what smart people do. They listen to stupid people like us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Adam is a listener, and uh for the first time listener. Uh, I'm going to fill you in on what the Jock and Nerd Podcast is real quick. It's a weekly show where we sit down and we geek out about stuff we love. And what we love is comic book and superhero related media, uh, you know, movies, televisions, in pop culture. Uh, so we got geek news, reviews, and interviews. And uh, if you check out our last episode, there's uh, reviews and news. And the episode before that is a great geek interview with cartoonist Greg Shegel. This show, however... It's uh, kind of its own beast. Sometimes we just like to do something crazy. This is going to be like our sciencey geek uh, superhero show. I don't know what the category is, but it's variety. So, listener, if you want to get involved, you want to shout out to the show, you want to get in touch, just visit our website, jockandnerd.com slash contact, uh, because that's where we have our Twitter handle, our Facebook page, Facebook group, email, get in touch with the show, jockandnerd.com. Also, we're going to talk about a lot of things. And they're all going to be in the show notes, jockandnerd.com slash 155. Okay. Well, look, I think we should start by uh, explaining how we got here, how we got Adam Morris Science Guy on the show all of a sudden. And it's all because of our buddy, Matt Delhauer. All right. Keep going. When he filled in on the show, and it may be the one where you were in the Philippines, uh, we were talking about the article about the Chinese, like uh, looking for psychic powers in children. And Delauer made some offhanded remark about, oh, scientists, they make the results of their, their experiments, whatever they want to get the funding, like the throwaway line. Well, this line got somebody's goat, didn't it, Adam? Yeah, that's a discussion I have regularly. Um, that was uh, just, yeah, again, it's just something people assume that we're paid by an organization or something. So we're going to find a result that, you know, comes out in their favor. And it's but, just not true, is it? That's not true. <laughs> oh shit! We're breaking, we're breaking through uh, <laughs> myths here, people. But I love that because that little thing touched a nerve. Adam got in touch. We started tweeting and messaging back and forth. That I was like, "Bro, this dude is super interesting. His job is really interesting." And it was kind of like it was funny because I was shy because I wanted to ask you to come on the show. But I was like, 
Wait, that would be weird. Is that weird? Didn't I tell you, hey, just fucking ask him? Yes. And then, and by that point, Adam had been like, I'd love to come on the show. And I was like, no way. Geek bonus. Because I was working up the courage. It was like going to prom. I was working up the courage. No, and not even prom. It's like you at the high school dance just it standing was. in the corner. Like, you keep going back to the like the refreshments, looking at the girl you want to like, dance think, with. And you just keep standing on that fucking wall. You think I, well, I was standing on the other wall because yeah. I wanted to be on your podcast really fast. So. Yeah, he was, all, he was all playing with his hair. And I was all looking down. And fidgeting my feet, and then and then our eyes met. So, anyways, uh, we're gonna start with getting Adam's science credentials. Uh, but I want to set the mood with this. Yellow Homer. There's a man here who thinks he can help you. Batman? No, he's a scientist. Batman's a scientist. It's not Batman. Talking nerd. All right, so <laughs> that's right. Batman is a scientist. Batman is a scientist, but it's not Batman. It's Adam Morris. Adam. Uh, what are some of your expertise uh, in your in your science life? What do you What are you into there? Well, my uh, my undergrad degree was in marine and freshwater biology, so I studied a lot about how certain animals uh, can adapt to like extreme situations, like why certain fish can survive extremely hot water, why certain fish can survive in water that's below zero, and actually, I did a project on how fish can survive in air and they breathe air and things. Whoa. So Whoa, um, that's pretty cool. <laughs> wait, they can? <laughs> Only how, a few. Um, how do you think Aquaman walks around on land? Come on. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that later, yes. I think. But, uh, but yeah, so there's some amphibious fish, they call them. There's these things in uh, in China, actually, called mud skippers. Um, and they're basically, they look like a frog. Um, they they move around on land. They hunt food on land. Um they breathe I'm gonna air. The, I'm going to look up what a mud skipper is. They look awesome. If you have you ever watched Ren and Stimpy when you were oh a, look at yes. that fucking thing. <laughs> so Muddy the mud skipper actually looks exactly like a mud skipper that you would see in real life. Um, Google Muddy the mud skipper from Ren and Stimpy now, and you'll see what I mean. So you'd but, be sitting uh, there by the water, and this thing will just come flopping out of the water. Yeah, looks like a uh, fucking frog. Oh, uh, that's pretty. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and that's what it is. Uh, so they breathe air. They live on land. We have, we on in Canada we have an East Coast fish uh, called the rock gunnel. And yeah. it's it's way less interesting because it just uh, when the tide goes out it just kind of stays on land. Um, and so anyway, whatever. But I got interested. Wait, wait. In your- question, question. Yeah. yeah, please. Mud skipper. Yep. Is it considered a fish or an amphibian? No, no, it's a fish. Uh, it's still a fish. What's so? Why aren't amphibians dual land and water? They are. Yeah, uh, it's a fish because it still has gills. Um, wow. All right. But the but the gills are sealed off. Um so it actually it's turned its like gill chamber into a mini lung. So it sucks Whoa. air. Whoa. It, sucks, it sucks air into its mouth and then it's absorbed, see this. and then it's absorbed over the like the gill filament like it would be a lung. Um but mostly a lot of the air is taken up over their skin. Um oh, crap. Evolution's crazy. Which actually is kind of similar to what I would think Aquaman would need. Right. <laughs> to be yeah. perfectly honest. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. But um there's other air breathing fish too that only like gulp air at the surface. Um lungfish. Similar kind of thing, but they don't get out on land. They don't look nearly as cool, but they, uh, when the water leaves, and they're African as well and uh, in Asian, when the water leaves, they uh, they form a little cocoon, and they can survive in that cocoon for we don't even know how long, decades. Damn. And then when the water comes back, the well, cocoon they just bust out. And they come out, and then, uh, and again, they don't, they don't breathe anything from the water, so they can survive in really toxic, really, you know, unfavorable water. And, just, just and this is the mud here. skipper? No, this is a, this is a lungfish. So there's the two, the two extremes of the... Of the and that lungfish grew up to be Godzilla. Lungfish. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, look at yeah. that fucking thing. That looks like an eel. It does, yeah. So you're into marine biology. What, uh, what other uh, disciplines so then, you got? So yeah, so after, after my undergrad, I, uh, I applied for all kinds of jobs, but nobody wanted to hire me. So I got sucked into the restaurant business for a few years, and yeah. uh, I bartended, you know, did whatever. It was a great job in my mid-20s. Nice. Yeah. Lots of girls, lots of uh, booze, lots of good times. What kind of bar? What kind of bar would you say? Worked, dive worked, bar? Uh, no, I, I, well, I worked at every, pretty much every restaurant you can name. I, I worked at like crappy sports bars. Um, my main job was at a place called The Keg. Uh, I don't think you guys have them down there, but uh, it's a steakhouse, mid, mid-of-the-road okay. steakhouse. Okay. Uh, you can still sell lots of wine and booze and uh, make a good amount of money. Um, but uh, yeah, so again, I've worked at everything in, in between and now. When I finished my PhD, I was working at a fine dining restaurant, so you know, moved up the chain. <laughs> there you but go. in uh, but in my mid twenties, it was the perfect job. I was working at a place called the Keg. It was mostly mostly women. Sweet. You mostly uh, lived you lived at the restaurant and then you partied afterwards. But uh, they what, offered what? me a, 
Did you use a scientist line? What was the what was the line? You're like, hey, baby, you into marine biology? I uh, I uh, I use it all the time, <laughs> <laughs> and it works. It worked to a point until eventually they're like, well, why are you working here? Uh, uh, shit, I gotta go. <laughs> those are the smart girls. <laughs> gotta stay away from them. Let me pass. <laughs> so I took a uh, so I took a management job with the same company in Windsor, and um, and I didn't like it. So that got me back into grad school. Um, so then I started looking around, and I ended up meeting these two guys. One of whom worked for the government in Canada. Another guy worked at the University of Guelph. They had two projects. One was in the Arctic, and one was in like a pond in Guelph. And I competed for the Arctic project. And yeah, uh, yeah I, so I got this this master's position that ended up, I ended up transferring from the master's to the PhD program Wow! within two or three months of me getting taken on by these guys. Um, I was in the Arctic and, wow. skidooing, and skidooing around with uh, Inuit folks while they were hunting for food. Um, so, so the whole point of the project is to look at how contaminants. Uh, so this is more of a chemistry project than marine biology, but still in the same field. So we were looking at how contaminants build up through the entire ring seal food chain. So you look at seals, fish, uh, plankton, algae, and then water. And the Inuit hunt seals for food. So essentially, Are I was getting sick. Uh, the seals? No, the Inuits. Uh, from eating the seals? Oh, well, yeah, because the, the contaminants, aren't they working their way up the food chain? Well, that's exactly that. So that's in the late 80s and early 90s. One of the reasons we do so much work in the Arctic is that people figured out the concentrations of certain contaminants in Inuit women's breast milk. Oh, so wow. What's, what's going straight into the babies. Oh, man. Um, had concentrations of PCBs, they're called, that were like 10 to 100 times higher than people near the source. You, you said PCB, not PCP, angel dust, right? No, no, no. no. He's just talking about toxic titties. Toxic <laughs> titties is exactly right. There were industrial chemicals, things that were used in uh, in transformers and uh, like anything electrical where, you, where there's a lot of voltage going through it and you needed yeah. to make sure that it didn't just explode or light on fire. But they're, the, they made them to be super long-lived and super uh, super persistent. So they get into the water, and then from the uh, once from the manufacturing or from the things that they're put into, and then they evaporate into the atmosphere, and then they're transported up into the Arctic. And so, years and again in the late '80s, they found concentrations in seawater were parts per quadrillion um, or femtillion. Like you're talking like basically things you can't measure. But when they measured them in the breast milk, the women had concentrations that were a hundred times higher than women. Wow. So their main food source is now contaminated. So that it was actually it was one of the studies that led to the discovery of how important biomagnification is. So that's what Anthony just said about how things increase through the food chain. Yeah. That was one of like this is how they one of the reasons they discovered that. It gets magnified. So wait, I have so many questions. Born and raised in Canada, you are? I was born and raised just outside of Toronto, yeah. Wow, I think you are our first Canadian guest we've had on the show. So sorry. Congratulations on that. I don't know what that's about. Oh, we're gonna we're, we're assholes for doing that. You gotta hang a Larry and then hang a Harry and then oh, hang out geez. on the Chesterfield, right? Well, I don't even know that. You're just one. giving it to her, just giving it to her, and hang out on the roof, the roof, the yeah. roof. But, uh, <laughs> come on up and we'll have a Molson, you know? <laughs> yeah, Molson. We'll go to Tim Hortons, eh? Uh, look, <laughs> so then PhD. How many years of school is this? Are we looking at all together for you? Oh, sweet Jesus. Well, my PhD took me a lot longer than it should have because I kept going back to the Arctic to get more samples. Oh, I, okay. It turns out because I'm I'm a pretty social guy and the Inuit folks liked me a lot. So I got along really well. So we just kept building the project out further and further and I got tagged into other projects. So all in all, my PhD took me eight years. Oh, wow. Um, a lot of school. But that was including the masters that I transferred into. This doesn't really matter. But uh, pl And plus my undergrad was four years. Um, and then, so that's 12 years. That's 12 that's years. Like, yeah, that's what I was getting at. So do we refer to you as Dr. Adam? Yeah, is, does that count as a, as a it's, title? It's a, it's a highly debated topic, but uh, yeah, technically we're doctors. Oh, no uh, shit. <laughs> and uh, I've, trust me, I've, I've applied with my bank and everybody else to make sure that my credit cards and everything say Dr. Adam Morris on them. Fuck yeah. But uh, we're not medical <laughs> doctors. But, uh, you know, arguably I can treat fish, amphibians, marine mammals. You know, what can a doctor do? They can only treat humans, right? Damn straight. <laughs> Farnsworth, Farnsworth had it right. So, look, the, and the point of this is by the end of the show, I'm going to christen you the official jock and nerd podcast science guy, Dr. Adam D. Morris, PhD. Geek boner. Shit. How impressive does that sound already? It I, sounds really, I feel like a, like a gnat. I love it. A so, gnat. the other thing that I want to. I'm already to, adding it to my resume, by the way. Just so yes, you, know. you should. You can add producer credits. The other thing I wanted to ask you real quick is you, you've been on this Arctic, Arctic project, you get it, and then suddenly. You are at the top of the world. 
What was that like first time you went up there like? It's probably the most like awe inspiring thing you'll ever experience. I can't imagine. It's got to look like an alien landscape. It does. Uh, I mean, again, I was, so I was working at a Resolute Bay, which is at the 75th parallel. Um, so, you know, you're pretty close to the North Pole. It's right in the center of the island system in the top of Canada there. Um, there's nothing else. You go from Resolute to Alert, and then you go to the North Pole. So there's only a couple other stops. Um, the community of Resolute Bay is 200 people. Um, wow. <laughs> How do you spell 40- the Resolute Bay or just Resolute Bay? Yeah, Resolute, just like it sounds. Resolute and Bay. what do they do up there? You ever run into Santo or Krampus? Or <laughs> no, no, but it's it's kind of a it. it's a pretty fucked up story because the people there were actually moved there under auspicious circumstances by the government of Canada in the fifties to kind of maintain sovereignty in the middle of the Arctic, but they made the best of it, and it's, it's a pretty amazing place. And my my guide and I again, it would just be him and I most days. Wow. So we'd skidoo south from the town about hundred kilometers, two hundred kilometers. Him on his snowmobile, mine on mine. And you're just flying over the ice sheets and you know snow and there's nothing around. And, wow! And the clouds, the whole ceiling, um, like where the where the atmosphere sits, is closer to the earth, and you can actually feel it and see it. The clouds are closer; like everything is right there wow. you're at the top of the goddamn world. Like it's so, so there's crazy. There's got to be like a big element of danger in this because you're like by yourself. If like something happens to both of you, no one's gonna be like coming by to like. See what's going on. Well, yeah, very true. But every day before we left, he would tell. Obviously, his wife knew his brother. His brother was a very experienced scientific guy too. So if something went wrong, somebody would come looking for us pretty quickly. But to answer your question, there was there were moments where you know Peter would be off kind of doing something. I would be sitting on my snowmobile, literally looking down, and I was thinking in my head like I'm looking down. At literally the rest of the world. Like there's no other. Yeah. You know what I mean, like you're looking yeah. downwards, and there's no sound for somebody. You guys in Chicago, yeah. rug boy, you're in New York. You're there's just this always this noise behind you, right? Yeah. Even if it's quiet, there's always this buzz. When you're there, there's nothing. Dead and it's, silent. It, at, at first, it's really kind of weird, and yeah. you don't know how to deal with it because um, you're literally just alone with your thoughts and things. But uh, but yeah, it, it was it's a life changing experience, and and being with them and seeing how they hunt for food, um, their respect for their environment, their respect for the animals that they're hunting, um, their respect for uh, you, man. yeah. That's amazing. Um, and look, this is dangerous enough, Adam, but that's not enough for Adam Morris, PhD, because you're focusing on bears now and their health. Yeah, my postdoctoral fellowship's all polar bears. And uh, we did. Sweet didn't... deal. So he's like, I'm going to go up the Arctic and fuck with polar bears. Okay. Oh, shit. Let's see. Don't let them sneak up on you. <laughs> well, it, it's funny you say that because, again, when you're working up north, there's a few rules you always abide by. When you're working with somebody and you're, you always face each other so that you can see over each other's shoulders because bears, they're massive. You know, 500, 800 pound bears, but they'll, or even more, but they'll, they can come out of nowhere because their feet are like snowshoes. Um, so they, yeah, that, that's amazing to me that they, you can, you can get snuck up upon by a polar bear that's 500 pounds. Again, you think it's kind of like ridiculous until you're there. Yeah. And, and like, I saw, I saw some, a polar bear from a few hundred meters away. We got kind of close and you could, you could hear it because it was hunting for seals. So it was pushing on the ice and cracking the ice. Um, but when it chose not to be heard, you couldn't hear a damn thing. And, uh, yeah. So they, they Good can Lord. and they sleep they sleep behind like ice humps and outcroppings and stuff. So you could they, they camouflage well too, I and, bet. Yeah, and you wouldn't even know that they were there and so yeah, there were I have had some I've had some pants shitting moments where uh Close calls? Where, Give us a close where, call. Where, well Peter would send me off like, especially as I as I got more experience, so like my fifth time up working with the same guy. He's like, Okay, well, you just go over here and get this and then I'm gonna go over here and we'll get this and we'll meet back here and I was like, But you have all the guns. <laughs> I have a, I have a hunt I have a hunting knife like if something goes on I'm it's like don't worry I can po- are polar bears nat- are naturally aggressive towards humans or do they give a fuck or what what's their, what's you know, their, I, what's their ne- normal demeanor I think it really depends on the on the time of the year sure. uh, for one thing and it also depends on just their general situation um what do the when, natives do they just stay the fuck away from them the Inuit folk yeah they uh no actually they're the bears are something they're not all that scared of they respect them a lot they don't really fear polar bears because they can track them really well. They know they typically know where they are. Like it's uh, the reason they're a bit distracted when they're working with me is because we're focusing on other things, right? But when they're out hunting for seals or hunting for bears, that's what they're focusing on, right? So, um, but again, like <laughs> it's funny. The one year um, I remember this very specifically. There's tons of polar bear tracks around, and these conditions were getting pretty foggy and sketchy. And uh, my guide was like, "Okay, we got to pack up and go." But it was. You know, I needed more samples. We needed more time. And 
I was like, yeah, I don't know. Can we stay for another hour or two? He's like, you're covered in seal blood. You, you, you're basically a polar bear lollipop right now. <laughs> um, and you're wearing a giant orange suit. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> shut up and get on your snowmobile. We got to go. Um, and it, it's true when you wow. think about it. But yeah, it's I, I, so yeah, I, I've never really had a close call where in like I, I saw a polar bear and I had to jump on my snowmobile and rip away. But I definitely, uh, I, I tipped and dumped my snowmobile when I was by myself in this weird little outcropping of ice and I started having a bit of a panic attack because I was my, my guide was far away I had no weapons <laughs> and my snowmobile was tipped over and uh, I was just picturing this bear coming around the corner and me trying to fend it <laughs> off with my hands or something Jeez. wow oh, look buddy you are doing amazingly important work uh, up there uh, you know stay safe but like right now especially with we were talking before the show about how the, the you know there's no counter argument to climate change like the deniers what little they are, like most of the sci- 97% of the scientists, like you said, Adam, are on the same page. And it's just clear by just watching, you know, the seasons go by every year, even here living in Chicago. So, look, this is important because I know the ice is melting and it affects how the polar bears hunt and it's going to reduce their population. There's Global just a- warming is a Chinese myth. No, they, I, don't, I don't think they made it up, really. I don't think it's a myth. They, they, they made it up. A left. Uh, 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 the oh my no not necessarily it's not necessarily <laughs> uh so look we want you to stay safe up there but let's get into superheroes which is why uh we got you here and very excited to, to to talk about the science of superheroes so now that we got your science credentials sir let's move on to your comic book geek credentials because the two of these things combined is what makes you really awesome uh what came first for you science or comic books like your your love of well I actually still have my first comic books from when I was three. Oh, uh, from, nice. from 1983, I have an issue of Batman that has Deadshot in it, and I have uh, a Superman Supergirl crossover. Um, so I used to, I love to draw. That's one of the things. Oh, that, no way, dude. That's even awesome. Geek that's even more awesome. So I almost went more to awesome. uh, one, of my, one of my secondary career paths. Um, I wanted to go to school and be a comic book artist, actually. But uh, Get really the fuck to- out of here. That's, uh, that was what I wanted to do at one point <laughs> of my life. I'm a, I'm a really good technical artist, but I can't. I figured out as I got a little bit older and as I was getting close to university that I can't, I can look at something and reproduce it almost perfectly, uh, but I can't, but I can't render something in three dimensions myself, you know? Right. Or just like straight from your imagination. On exactly. I can take a splash page mm. from a comic and I can mm-hmm. produce mm. it for you, but I can't, uh, but I can't just draw. That's a skill though too, you know? Oh, for sure. And it, yeah. it, it comes in handy in, in science. Like when we're in the field, you, you, you know, you often make drawings of various organs or things, but yeah, so I love to draw my grandmother, was kind of my primary. I was born when my parents were 15 years old, so my grandma took care wow. of me when uh, when I was little, and she encouraged me to draw whenever she could. So yeah, nice. When uh, when I was three, apparently I picked up these two comic books in a grocery store back when they still had those spindle racks. Yeah, know, the old spindle racks. <laughs> and uh, and I st- again, I still have them. The covers are falling off. There's indents in the pages from where I traced the pictures when I was a kid. That's awesome. Um, so again, I just I, I because of my love of the art. Yeah. Got in, and then I. And then actually, the story goes, and I don't know if this is true or not because I was so little, but uh, I started to teach myself to read from the comics because my parents would read them to me. Yeah, and sure. Could, and from the pictures, I could kind of put together what some of the words were. And so anyway, so comics were part of my like lexicon from a very young age. And, uh, and then I just, as I got older, I mean, how can you not love Spider-Man? You know, yeah. Batman's amazing. Um, the best. I, Batman's the best. Do you still read? I still read comics all the time. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've fallen off a little bit lately, but I've been trying to get back into it. I've been reading the uh, a lot of the Star Wars comics that have been coming. Yeah, out. those are really good. The new ones are great. Um, I've been getting caught up on the new Iron Man, uh, which I'm the Riri awesome. Williams. Riri Williams with Riri. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is it any good? I'm only on issue three, so yeah. So oh, far, so, so far, it's interesting, but not you know not my favorite. But it's uh, I, I fully love the diversity that they're trying to do with Marvel, but I also kind of am a bit heartbroken that all the old school characters have kind of vanished. Well, they might be bringing them back. They they were hinting at some Generations uh, event later this summer with this amazing Alex Ross artwork of the new characters with their legacy character counterparts behind them. It's a beautiful illustration. Yeah, that painting is incredible. Right? Yeah, and I think it's their answer to like DC's rebirth, kind of bringing, you know, bringing these legacy characters back and with the new characters and tying it together. So that's cool that you still read, uh, yeah, we, you know, I, I, we're still reading, but now I've, I've reduced what I buy every week, and uh, I'll probably just get trades from here on because it's just it's a crazy industry and it costs a lot of money, and I'm running out of space to put all these individual issues. Yeah, I, I, I've honestly I've I've moved largely to trades for most stuff because I can't 
I just I have too many long boxes. I live in a one bedroom apartment. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't oh, yeah. I got I got the same way, Adam. Man, that the, the long boxes start to add up, and I was like, why am I buying this weekly when I can just wait and read it all at once? Yeah, exactly. And they're really long. Those boxes they take up a lot of space. So I imagine the sciencey type superheroes uh, attracted you more, probably. Yeah, and the science of it. Well, again, it, it's funny because I love like Batman is one of my favorites. Absolutely, I love Superman too. Um, he's been off and on boring over the years, as you both. As everybody knows, obviously, right? Like sometimes he's really interesting, and sometimes yeah, he can do yeah. everything. Uh, but I love Marvel because of the because Stan Lee loves science, and he tried desperately to kind of infuse science into the comics, right? Absolutely, was- yeah. And you saw that, you know, in the '60s with uh, you know radiation and nuclear bomb and what was going on in the world. Like he would pull all these crazy science things, and it was it was it set him apart from DC, where DC was. They had established themselves as gods and magic and and uh, a lot of these, you know, metahumans. altered metahumans. Right. The metahumans. These characters really are like, they just get their powers because. Right. I always point to the, the goofiest ones, like the original Green Lantern got his from like a, a fucking lantern that was made out of wood. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. The Flash yeah. got yeah. like his just struck by lightning with all these chemicals, of like ionized water or some bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. The, actually, I was reading this the other day. The original Flash was exposed to heavy water. Yes, there it was heavy, heavy water. It was yeah. heavy, dirty water. I remember, I remember finding that out too. I was like, "What the shit is heavy actually, water?" Right before that, actually, it was hard water, which is really just you know. It's now just, we know hard yeah. water will just not wash the soap off of you as fast. That's pretty much the only it's effect. Just, of it. uh, a little bit dirty water, but you know, you. Hey, it was it, the forties. You know, exactly. 40s were bas- they basically thought that there was a sun god in the forties. Right. Think about yeah. You think <laughs> about the science then, but you got to admire Stan Lee for how much fun he had. And how he stretched science, uh, science elements, and uh, and uh, and you know you also got it not just Stanley but Jack Kirby. A lot of that science fiction stuff came straight for Jack Kirby. Absolutely. Stan just really didn't give him any credit. He just wrote, uh, "Yes, I wrote this. Uh, <laughs> don't worry about that, anything else." So, uh, having said that, you sent a great outline that we're going to use. I like to, this. Yes, to guide our, our conversation, uh, you kind of broke down six categories of superpowers in science. Now, I found a little, I found a couple articles that were shared, but I found an interesting piece about uh, the Marvel superheroes role-playing game, the old-school, like, Dungeons & Dragons-style role-playing game, which I had when I was in high school, and I had no friends to play it with. Lame. True story. Uh, so still, in, it's still the same. It's, it's still yes, true, Yes, that has not changed. That box has yeah. still never been opened since high school. And you but, still have no friends. <laughs> according to <laughs> canonical Marvel canon, they have five general origins for all superheroic powers. Theirs are altered humans, like Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, high-tech wonders, like Iron Man, mutants, like X-Men, robots, like the Vision, and alien, which could be like Thor. But I like your categories, because what you did is you kind of took those similar things, but uh, this will encompass Marvel and DC more. So your categories that we are going to discuss are tech-based, serum-slash-super-steroids, Radiation, uh, genetics or mutants, freak accidents or unexplained uh, phenomena, and then alien. And I like this note where you do mention, and I have actually another one that we'll talk about at the end, but there's obviously magic and sciencey magic. Uh, can, which I, is, can I throw one more in there? Yeah. What, what, what were you thinking? Although it's been kind of like, like uh, uh, Adam points out, kind of explained as pseudoscience magic, yeah, but yeah. there's also just gods. Like originally Thor was just the Norse god or like Hercules was a Greek god. Sure. And and you see how the MCU and that, they kind of explain they're, that. They're getting the away from that. Way. Yeah, they're getting away from it. The, uh, the one I would add also is like robot slash artificial intelligence. Oh, yeah. That's based good. things, which would be like the vision and LMDs. Like kind of tech. Yeah, it's tech, but tech based is a little bit different. OK, let's just start yeah, there. I see what you're saying. We'll get into it. We're going to talk about these six. Adam, let's start. Why don't you uh, talk to us about the tech-based category of superheroes? Sure. Uh, yeah, well, this is an interesting one. I mean, theoretically, people look at Iron Man and they're like, oh, we could probably do that, right? Like, it uh, seems like it's fairly close to something that we could put together. We do have people testing jetpacks. We have people testing all kinds of exoskeletons and whatnot. But to be honest, I kind of picture this like, that scene in Iron Man 2 where Hammer is showing them the videos of all the suits that he's invented. Yeah. And they're like snapping people's spines and bending them backwards and whatnot. Yes. <laughs> because That's what would happen. It, it, it really is. Like you, I mean, I think we could, and I said this in the notes as well, but like we could, we could probably put something together similar to like the edge of tomorrow, um, where you have something that can kind of make you a little bit faster, a little bit stronger. 
that exoskeleton was amazing, and it looked so like doable and realistic. Like it made a lot of sense. Uh, there are that, suits that like the militaries come up with that you yeah. can like lift more with. Yes, but I mean they're not they're not armor like all armor though. It's like they're not very sleek either. These things tend to be no, bulky and slow. Exactly, they're big, bulky, and the main problem is power. Because um, yes. even if you can, even if you can use it for twenty minutes, if you're in the middle of a battlefield, like in again, live die repeat or Edge yeah. tomorrow, whatever you want to call it. Those things ran out of power. 20 minutes is not going to do you (laughs) you any good, right? You're going to... Well, the the big thing with Iron Man's thing is his arc reactor runs on 100% efficiency, right? Right. So that thing... There's no waste. Which is is physically impossible. Like, no reactor is 100% efficient, right? So, and actually, this is part of what I was looking at leading up to this. Like, the only thing that's really feasible is that it's some kind of, like, fusion reactor um, to create that much energy um, in that amount of space, but... It's could you could a human have a fusion reactor on them and not be poisoned by it? It wouldn't be the poisoning, I don't think. It'd be the like the one the or two percent amount of energy that escaped. Ah, it would, would, would kill cook you. you instantly. Oh, like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot like, stuff. There's no there's no way to to contain that that reaction 100. percent There needs to be some some faulty kind of part of it that's going to go and have to that's interesting because I was I was looking at like atomic bombs for whatever reason just because I want to blow up the world yeah. and. Uh, <laughs> Like when atomic bombs drop, like literally, it, it, like the heat, it's so hot that everything turns to mist around around it. And those, yeah, and those are fission bombs, right? Yeah. Like it's a different uh, fission. Well, there's fission and fusion bombs, right? No, we haven't we haven't really created a fusion bomb yet. Actually, oh, that's not, what not needs yet? to be okay. done. Uh, but like, so <laughs> you, that's what we need. But look, think about the Iron Man suit. Not only that is it like there's Wait, no but, way. But, yeah. but you couldn't put a fission reactor in yourself, by the way. Sorry, just to, in, in your like to, answer, to, yeah. to run your body. Well, that's one thing. And the suit itself, like it, it would be a lot more bulky uh, to make that. And then you think about him; he's got jet fucking engines uh, in his shoes that make him fly as fast as a a, a jet airplane. Uh, the, I don't think that would work out as smooth as as they show you or work out. But, well, again, and, the, and where's the, the fuel for all that shit? Again, the power and the fuel would be the issue, right? You yeah. Need- some kind of container for it, or again, in that case, it's powered by the arc reactor, which they never explain. They don't have to in that. Yeah. <laughs> in, in, in that. Why can't that. we just make it, an it's, arc it's, reactor? It's explained by an element in Iron Man Two that tastes like pineapple. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you remember that exact line. It's like tastes like yeah. pineapple. So pineapple runs Iron Man suit in the MCU. That was right after he built the particle accelerator in his basement, right? And he was like, he built, <laughs> he built. Well, he and he found a new element that his dad hid in the maps for the. Um, Future world or whatever the fuck. He oh, had. that's right. It was it was a real fucking do sex. Lots of particle <laughs> accelerators uh, in superhero comics. Also, uh, but so to, but yeah. to have to have boots that would actually make you yeah. fly. Like you need some kind of like like an ion propulsion system or something. Like like we're still working towards you know, and like a lot of that stuff only even theoretically works in space, not on Earth. So I don't know. Again, you you couldn't just strap some. Jet boots to your feet. <laughs> you know what's kind of cool? Yeah. I don't know if you guys have seen, but the people that wear the jetpacks in the water. And I was just gonna say, I kind of want to. I want to do that. Incredible. I want to try that. That looks awesome. It looks like Iron Man, actually. Yes. The way they, the right. Way that's what. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah. It's just, but it's just taking the water and just propelling yourself through that. And there's a fucking lot of water. They do have like um, like drones that can pick people up. People off uh, the ground. They're that they're strong that, now. They, really? Yeah, they have like a like a like a speeder bike that they made with the with the, the propellers. Holy shit! Oh, that's cool. So there is shit that there. I think that exponentially, as things ramp up, everything's gonna get smaller. And you know, there used to be the computers used to be the size of like a whole entire room, and now that you can get one the size of a thumb drive. You know, well, that's uh, that's Moore's law. Am I right, science yeah. guy? Right, you are right. Yeah, that's yes. Cool. Where, uh, All of the these things that we tech, think are impossible. Tech gets smaller and smaller and chips get smaller and you can cram more shit on there. Uh, okay, so also in the tech-based category, we have to talk, of course, about Spider-Man. Geek boner! And, uh, you know, his web shooters and, and, and making... I think Spider-Man's a, an amalgamation. It is. Spider-Man is a, is a combination. So we'll talk about Spider-Man uh, later, his other powers, in the later categories. But for this category, the fact that this fucking teenager... Is able to create a an adhesive that like the government can't make or 3M can't make that dissolves in an hour that's super elastic that uh, just happens to have uh, like huge uh, amount of fluid in a tiny container without having to refill it too often. Uh, that's kind of cool. Has anybody ever made working web shooters that you know of, Adam? No, 
not at all. I mean, if you uh, if you go onto YouTube, you can find a bazillion videos saying working web shooters. Look at this. Um, but essentially, anybody with a grade ten chemistry book and uh, like a plastic tube, you can make something that would expand and become kind of adhesive. Anybody? Really? Well, I, I should have written down an example, but uh, but yeah, I mean, you don't need uh, a huge like, combine two things and they'll become. Think about uh, like a cement mixer shot, even. Ah. <laughs> you know, like. So things will coagulate, go from liquid to, to solid, but uh, to create in something like a web line, that yeah. is a whole. That's a whole different ballgame, and that's. I don't think anybody's even come close to that outside of like a metal uh, or a wire kind of line, um, as you saw in like Spider Man Two. But I don't oh. think that. But that doesn't really make make any sense because you'd have to have the wire would have to be so thin, and again. It's like an unlimited resource for him, essentially. Yeah, I mean, he uh, runs out at you know uh, story plot moments, but aside from that, it's I'm just like wondering it's, if a liquid could harden that fast. Yeah, some so there are some chemicals that when they combine, as soon as they're exposed to air, they'll they'll solidify. There are there are definitely like combinations of things that will air in particular will cause that to happen. That will, they'll instantly become rigid. Yeah. Like, I, I would think, why can't you reverse engineer like spider silk, like the how the foundations well, of that? They they actually they they do engineer spider silk. Um, so there are goats that they've genetically engineered. Um, what? Their their milk produces the proteins that are in spider silk. Oh. Um, so okay. they milk they milk the goats. Whoa. And then they add I forget what the chemical a few, a few different chemicals to the to the milk it precipitates so the the spider silk proteins become attracted to each other. And then they can extrude it like out of this milk. Whoa! And they Whoa. use they use uh, they use a collagen. So collagen is uh, yes the thing that makes up like plant cell membranes. The things that give fiber fiber is is cellulose. And it's kind of elastic too, also, isn't it? Collagen. It's uh, it's elastic, but it's unbelievably strong. Um, yes, yes. So they make like scaffoldings out of cellulose, and then they can build spider silk. Wow. Um, you know, constructs in whatever shape they want. See, now you just gotta shove that in a web shooter fucking device. <laughs> well, that's the problem is extruding it. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, you could you could make it, but it, first of all, it'd be huge. Yeah. And second of all, getting it to um, getting it to come out in like a nice stream would be very difficult. Like, they're developing it for uh, like sterile surgical kind of mesh and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because it, it is. I mean, it's very much Spider Man's webs, right? Like, it'll dissolve yeah. after yeah. a certain period of time. They're biodegradable. Uh, your body just reabsorbs the, the proteins. So. I will buy that as soon as somebody figures out how to make it. I'll tell you but what. The, the, only, <laughs> the only thing that makes sense in terms of a web shooter would be carbon nanotubes. Oh, uh, shit. Okay. And carbon nanofibers. Um, and actually, there's a, a guy online, who a physicist who's smart, much smarter than I am. He, uh, he did actually the calculations uh, on it <laughs> and showed that so carbon nanotubes are, are basically you can, um, you can create miniature fibers of carbon that naturally form into these cylinders. Wow. Um, and then again, using, at it right now. using certain bridges, you can tie them together. Um, I've never seen like a stream of carbon nanotubes. They're using them to build like nanomachines and stuff like that. But nanotubes are essentially the, the strongest uh, material you could get. Wow. And, you, and you could technically engineer them into some kind of fiber that you could, you could pack. But, and, they're, uh, and, they're super, and they're super tiny. Yeah, well, they're, yeah, it's nano size. So. It's nano, okay. So a nanometer not- is one billionth of a meter or 10,000 times smaller than a human hair. Oh, shit. That's pretty small. Uh, the size of my penis. The <laughs> be of average, a little bit, a little bit bigger than your penis rugs. But. <laughs> so, again, yeah, the challenge, the challenge would be how to you know, get it to come out of the web shooter in a, yeah. in, a, in a good way. But this guy actually went out of his way to do the calculations on – how much energy it would take to fire a web line 50 meters to hit somebody and things like that. But the main problem with the nanotubes is that they don't degrade. So oh, they would be there forever. His so spider, so spider be man everywhere. swinging around the city, there'd be thousands <laughs> of streams of these nanotubes everywhere. The city and, uh, would be very upset. God damn it, Spidey, can you take these things down? Well, and actually, we, as we've developed nanotechnology, we've found out now there's nanopollution. Oh. Uh, so, oh. Carbon, so carbon nanotubes, uh, nano silver, nano tin. Uh, these things can cause some serious, like, cellular effects. So Spider-Man technically could be responsible for killing a lot of people. If Crap, he's going to give you <laughs> nano cancer. Very tiny cancer. That's what you get. Uh, and then last, uh, so the last guy we can, have, we can discuss in the tech-based is, is Batman. And uh, maybe this is, like, the most 
plausible of these? Like, which of these that is the closest of actually happening? I feel like some of Batman's gadgets are just, like, straight-up regular gadgets. Like, I remember I found this post of this one dude who he built his own Batsuit, and it had, like, 200 things. Like, he made all these things. He made GPS trackers and a, a grappling hook, and and they were all working, actual working bat gadgets. I Wait, feel like so this, this, he's got a grappling hook that will pick him up and, and zip him up to the top of a roof? Uh, I think he may have. We talked about it on the show. Remember, we played that video, and the guy talked about uh, making all these things. Is this is this the most plausible, you think, out of all these bats, bats gadgets? I, I think so, yeah. I think the problem with Batman isn't necessarily making the gadgets. It's having somebody that can use them without killing themselves. Yeah, that's, that, true. that's so. true. I would also point out the, the thing that a lot of people overlook with Batman is his will, and I don't think anybody's going to have that unbreakable will. I think everyone has a breaking point, and his breaking point seems to be exponentially better than anybody else's. Absolutely, for sure. I mean, I think there, there are, again, there are some calculations out there that it would take however many, like $20 million in 20 years of your time to become Batman. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, the grappling, grappling guns exist for sure. Like you could get yourself a Kevlar suit with some hard plates in it that would prevent you from getting killed by gunfire. But uh, could you run across a rooftop, fire the grappling gun in that suit, and yes, not with crash a cape, the ground? <laughs> I don't yeah, know. wearing a fucking twenty pounds suit? Probably not. So wait, you could get a grappling gun that'll lift up a human uh, like an adult. I believe they exist. I, don't Whoa. quote me on this. I, I could be wrong. But um, again, I I think it's probably one of those things that's uh, plausible. Yeah, yeah, it exactly. can be done. Cool. Okay, let's move on to uh, the second category, which is serum slash super steroids, which is a type of altered human. Adam, how close are we to this becoming a real thing, a real Captain America or like a even Deadpool is kind of like he was altered that way, the same thing. For sure. Uh, yeah, you know, I think, uh, I mean, <laughs> I think we'd be silly not to think that the government hasn't been working on super soldier type serums for a long time. I'd like to think that they, yeah, they have a Captain America somewhere. Or, yeah, or at least a working, you know, model of some kind. Um, I a mean, bunch of dead bodies that just, they're still figuring it out. I uh, mean, you go, you go back to the dark World War II, like Hitler eugenics kind of programs where he, yeah. was, trying to, he was trying to breed superhumans. The Americans and like, our, our kind of side of the world has been a little more, uh, you know, dependent on uh, science and technology to try and increase it. But, I mean, there are definitely steroids out there that... You know, increase your muscle mass, make you a lot stronger. Um, you know, testosterone, human growth hormone, all those things allow you to build PEDs, more muscle. Yeah, um, yeah. I was I was just going to point out that that I mean, this stuff. Not only the government, but just athletes in general are able to perform amazing things when they concoct their their PEDs and get get everything going at the right time. Absolutely, and that's. Uh, I mean, again, you, you can see the when Olympic athletes get busted for steroids, it's like, yeah. wow, that guy ran yeah. <laughs> two seconds faster than everybody else. Like, it's fairly obvious. But um, it's not even the, the steroids too. It's like like EPO. Like you're able to uh, put more oxygen in the blood, longer stamina, yeah, like, would, stuff like yeah. that. They're like yeah. stem cells that you can also put into your blood stream. Yeah, yeah, the stem cell stuff. I'm not sure how that actually would help necessarily. But what Anthony is talking about the EPO, um, that was actually one of my points. Was was that even if you could increase the muscle mass and make the person bigger, the problem is endurance. Um, yeah, so right. keep keeping the fuel coming into the muscles, right? Like, so you need, you need ATP, like the main energy of a cell, you need oxygen and you need those two things in huge amounts. And, uh, you'd burn through your ATP stash really quickly. If you were, you know, exerting yourself at captain America level. Um, is that what Lance Armstrong did, uh, early on too? They were kind of, they would recycle their blood. Know. Like during the races to keep them going, and then they they kind of just like it was like a transfusion. Yeah, you can infuse you can infuse more fresh red blood cells. So they they have so you get basically you're just you're just increasing the amount of iron in the bloodstream, right? That can carry oxygen, blood and, doping, and yeah, and deliver yeah, and deliver it to your muscles. So so what I was thinking was like if you really wanted like a proper super soldier, he would need like a Bane style kind of delivery device. Yes, that would uh, they would pump in. Like the substrates, the the thing, the building blocks for the stuff that they need to keep keep that energy up. Well, like let let, let me ask you a question, Adam. Like let's say like Bane style, you had like just fucking like adrenaline or and testosterone. Maybe I'm maybe that's one and the same. But you had that just fucking pumping in you in a time of like you needed to exert a ton of fucking strength. Mm -hmm. Like, with is that possible? Is that plausible? And, and like how much how how strong could you be before you pop? <laughs> well, that's like, <laughs> like your muscle. Before you fiber. pop. 
your muscle fibers have a certain like tension limit and everything too, right? Like there's there's right. there's all kinds of things to consider. Like you know, and again, you could you it wouldn't just be a few different things. Like that cocktail would have to have all kinds of weird little chemicals in it that the enzymes in your body use that you don't even know are there, right? Like so, little cofactors that that uh, like detach the muscle fibers as they're as they're contracting and stuff. All those enzymes would start breaking down, and eventually you would just seize up into one massive like. You know, tetanus kind of ball. Oh, geez, you'd snap together. Yeah, you would break. Once, once, the- your, once your muscles run out of energy, they don't relax, right? They tense. They're so you- all so they don't go back because they would rip right. and have to rebuild real quickly, and then tear and rebuild and tear and grow. Exactly. And so that's what you again. You'd be infusing all these things that would help rebuild these. But again, like, I mean, we're talking in pure theory here. Like these things don't work at that speed. You need like days to. Recover. And they're not permanent either. They they go away. You have to keep doping yourself yeah. and keep taking the you know the cycles or of, of everything. Exactly. So, like, somebody like Cap, obviously, like, he would have to constantly be It'd taking be this thing and he'd be eating a well, lot of it, food. It's crazy if you look at, like, athletics. A lot of athletes get popped for things and you're like, wait, how does that fucking help you? Like, they'll get popped for, like, taking female hormones and shit. Right. And it's because they're just trying to balance their fucking body. It's not, they're not getting caught for the stuff that you would think, like, steroid. Right. They're getting caught for all the stuff that, like, like, what the fuck? Why are you doing that? The counter. It, the they're, counter they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're, no, their body's so out of whack. That's actually a, a awesome point, and it's actually something that I was going to mention too. Yeah, you have to have. I'm sorry, I'm taking all your stuff. I'm reading your notes. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just fucking with you. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. That's uh, but it, yeah, you need to, you need to counteract because because all these other chemicals in your body would be telling your body that certain things are happening that aren't happening. So you'd have to have all the other stuff in there, kind of telling the rest of your system that no everything's fine don't attack this and don't do this right like it's i don't know human yeah, physiology you need, yeah you need like a crazy cocktail i thought they did it so you had like luke cage the netflix series that was kind of this thing but i thought nuke on jessica jones they they kind of did a good job with that because he had to keep taking these pills and it would be a short time that he would just you know bulk up but then it really took the toll on him and knocked him out and he had to like it took him forever to recover so I appreciated that kind of realism in the in the nuke. Yeah, nuke's always been. I, I love nuke as a character. He's hilarious. Just the the kind of imbalanced version of Captain America. Yeah, um, I love yeah. him. Yeah. Give me a red. Give me a red. Yeah, he's like, give me the red. Put me in, coach. I'll take him out. And the guy's just a. Is there is there any way to like in like Iron Man three? They like hack the basically the body, the brain, oh, yeah. and like mix technology with the body. Is there any way to actually do that? <sighs> yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, I don't know. Because I mean, isn't the uh, brain basically a, just a, a, an amazing PC? In some, I mean, it's all electrical signals and things, right? right? But uh, I, I mean, I think the thing is, and they allude to this in that movie. We don't know enough about the brain to really mess around with it to the point where we could reprogram things. Right. Don't we have um, those, the synthetic, the prosthetic hands that react to you know mental signals? For brain yeah, signals? They, they can connect now like, some prosthetics into your nervous system so that Whoa. the That's electrical. Insane. So the electrical is depolarized by your nerve because again your nerves conduct like electrons and things, right? So it's a. Uh, when do you think the singularity is going to happen? <laughs> oh, like like when we're uh, going to see Cyberdyne and um, Skynet come online? And consciousness well, first and, and while we're saying yeah. that the, it was going to happen sooner than we thought. I don't know. Uh, AI and artificial artificial intelligence terrifies me to a point. For sure. <laughs> that's the yeah. that's the last category. Rugs, you're jumping ahead. Uh, <laughs> well, no, we're talking about where the singularity yeah. is when human beings and technology bl- merge. We're yes, just, yes. We're when talking about prosthetics. We're talking about chips in the brain. When your consciousness is in the cloud, for all intents and purposes. I mean, I think I think we're kind of close to something like uh, like the Doctor Octopus arms and like Spider Man ah, Two, yeah, where they yeah. kind of where he has that chip that goes into the back of his neck, and you yeah. see the things extrude into his spine. Like again, that's essentially what some of these prosthetic arms can do uh, to a point, but uh, but yeah, it's it's we're still a bit of a ways off that's from crazy. being like full out cyborgs and things. But I mean, we're up, we're on the way for sure. It's uh... cyborg soldiers. All right, that's uh, let's move on to the next one, which is a really fun one to discuss, which is radiation, another form of altered human, and it's such a dated thing, but. It's the thing in Marvel Comics that if you're exposed to radiation, it does all these different things to you. Like, for no reason, uh, one guy gets spider powers, the Hulk gets big, and radiation affects different people differently just because uh, Stan Lee thought it was cool. And a lot of these now have been updated. Like, the Ultimate Spider-Man, he's at a, it's like a, it's not, it was a genetically engineered spider in Ultimate Spider-Man. 
Uh, but I always look, being a huge Spider Man fan, I always kind of wanted to try that. Tom, be honest. Did everyone, did anyone try? <laughs> Throw like, some gonna, radiation on yourself? Uh, no, I was going to take a spider and put it on and put him in the microwave and then make him bite me <laughs> and see oh. what would happen. Oh, shit. Look, uh, let me, I, I let me jump about in the, here. Yeah. Radiation obviously was used a lot because our, the world didn't even know right. what, how the effects of radiation. I mean, if you look up old bomb videos. At the in back in the day when they were testing the atomic bomb, they would have soldiers running towards the fucking bomb. You can <laughs> so look can these up them? on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it was because they wanted to attack immediately after. They oh, wanted shit. to kill anybody that was left oh, in the Jesus. ruins because they didn't know that these fucking bombs. You look up videos and there's fucking carrier ships next to these fucking explosions that get just eviscerated because they didn't realize how fucking crazy this shit was. You would think oh, there would be some superheroes to come out of mutated. You, from you that can you can look up exposure. soldiers running towards <laughs> atomic blasts. It's insane because we didn't know shit. Yeah. I'm still thinking about if if a microwave is is radiation or not. If Imran's plan could have could have come true, could that work? <laughs> I think I think I think you just cooked the spider, but you know it's, <laughs> <laughs> the spider has some sort of liquid in it, so it would it would vibrate really quickly and explode. Okay, but what would happen if a spider did get caught uh, from, like, a, a nuclear power plant? It's been living there, and it's full of radiation, <laughs> and it bites you. It would just get cooked, right? It wouldn't. Yeah. yeah, it would just die immediately. Like, especially if it was, like, as close to a nuclear reactor as in, like, Spider-Man. Like, and first of all, <laughs> that, that original Spider-Man origin is one of my favorites, too. But, like, they have this... this machine that's capable of producing this radiation in the middle of a lab with a bunch of high and, school kids. And they're just standing around <laughs> looking at it. Yeah, they're like right there just now, waving I, at it. I want to ask a question. Yeah. Um, why does radiation, wh- why did they think that radiation would mu- mutate people? Because, well, I mean, it does do stuff to you like, uh, you know, you get burned, you get keloid scars and all stuff like yeah. that. But Yeah, nothing fun. I, I mean, it, maybe it, the it, children get mutated? Something it, like that. It, it does mutate your genes too. Like it can. It depends on the type of. Uh, it depends on the type of radiation. There's uh, like alpha waves, beta waves, and gamma rays. Yeah. Gamma rays are actually a thing. Um, so gamma rays go the, the like the shortest distance, but they have the greatest greatest power. impact. Um, so they'll, they'll go through your tissues and like get through to your um, to your cell, like your nuclei and things like that. Um, whereas a lot of radiation would, would, like you said, just burn the surface or like or just burn the flesh off your bones kind of thing. But um, yeah, it, it really just depends on the type. It would just kind of fuck up some of your cells and then all of a sudden your cells would be growing wrong. Yeah, it, it would it would affect the DNA and DNA is constantly replicating itself and creating more cells and whatnot, right? So once there's an imperfection in one chunk of the DNA, it'll just get replicated throughout. You know, if, so if you're mutating entire chunks of, uh, of cells or parts of the body, you can, you can conceivably, yeah, cause like a series of mutations but but more often than not it would kill somebody than rather than like create a you know superhero or so anything but do you believe that they've been trying to use uh this kind of radiation to mutate things like science back in the day i'm quite sure <laughs> absolutely but it never probably um, was fruitful because we would we, something would have come of that yeah again as anthony was saying with the with the bombs like you can look through history uh, like science between like 1930s to 19 like 70s and the stuff they were doing with radiation was really disturbing and well they like you could go to the shoe store and you could get an x-ray like of your foot like you would they thought it was that harmless they're like hey check your shoe size and look at your bones and you would stand and they would shoot x-rays and you could see right through your foot and the they they had store. to make a treaty they used to test atom bombs in the fucking air and yeah, they didn't realize the that that sh- yeah, just in the atmosphere, and they didn't realize. They're like, wait a minute, that shit's just gonna fall on everybody. Underground. Holy fuck! What are we here, Las Vegas? About that. <laughs> but yeah, right. they, they, there were some scientists that thought in the '40s that like, if we tested, if we used the atom bomb, it might create a hole in the atmosphere. Like we had no night, no fucking idea uh, what was well, going on. Definitely not. Like again, uh, Einstein came up with the theory that led to the Manhattan Project, right? Like the so the ideas behind yeah. those. The the theoretical physics behind it worked long before they had any idea what the hell would actually happen. Like I, I mean, most people still contend they didn't really understand that they were going to vaporize Hiroshima and Nagasaki, right? Like it was. Uh, oh, they, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, it's uh, so. so you saying the Hulk is possible? No. <laughs> what would happen? Well, what should have happened to need, Bruce Banner? The Hulk would need a lot of shit to make it even remotely possible. Like the. 
Again, I, like, would think <laughs> that, I would think that maybe he would, could mutate into the Hulk, but not back down. Not back and forth. Yeah, that's that's definitely one of the main main things. Like, because you'd have to have like some kind of storage system for the energy, right? Like, it's uh, yeah, yeah. It is. It is again. Einstein's theory is relativity. Like, there, there. It is possible to convert energy into mass or matter, but only at like the speed of light. And again, there's a lot of different different caveats well, to it. Well, could could you get like a like let's say like a seven foot eight basketball player? And they're always usually really thin. Could you get him and just make him like a, a muscle meathead? Like, is that possible? <laughs> Via radiation? <laughs> and then that would be your Hulk. Well, yeah, use, using the, the comic book uh, theory, yes. But, uh, again, I think you just vaporize your basketball player before you got a Hulk. Out of <laughs> but, uh, oh, I, was, I was saying without radiation, just good old-fashioned food and well, good, good some, get some HGH in that some bitch. Some super protein powder in a neutral bullet uh, smoothie. Yeah. That'll do it. And then the the good thing is, if he was storing uh, gamma radiation in his system, he'd be constantly mutating as well. So there like there'd be other effects. It wouldn't just stay as like this, you know, as the Hulk. He'd and then wouldn't up. he poison people around him? Also, probably. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, <laughs> but there are there are things. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of these called uh, water bears or tardigrades. No, what the hell is um, that? They're one of the coolest little microorganisms you've ever seen. They're they're resistant to freezing radiation. They like look anything. like they look like a. Uh, uh, a worm with like an eye at the end of it. Or something. Oh, look at that shit! <laughs> Not a worm. They look like a little bear. That's why they're yeah, called. They do. Uh, this looks they... like a fucking Snorlax. Exactly. A Snorlax. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? But they have. Uh, they oh, have what the... is that thing? It's tiny, right? Holy shit! It is. It's it's micro. So that's an electron micrograph that you guys are looking at there. So it's like whatever. But but these things like you could go outside to a tree, peer, peel a chunk of frozen moss off the tree. Yeah. Throw the moss in a bowl yeah. and then look at it under a dissecting microscope, and you'd see a ton of those things in there. They're one of the most prolific and like and resistant animals. Holy to any kind shit! Of, uh, it's like that Simpsons episode where like a whole civilization grew out of the mold in her bed in the bowl under her bed. But how this relates to the Hulk? They actually have. They found out recently that they have these structures that shield their DNA from radiation inside. Oh of them. wow! So they could technically they wouldn't be mutated by any kind of radiation at all. They don't, don't need any more mutation. And but they wow, that's, how, that's crazy. They think that's, a, that's an evolutionary thing because they've, yeah. been around, they've been around for so long so they've been in, like exposed to all kinds of different radiation over the years. Is the, is there any way to take that and reverse engineer it to use it for humans? Oh, well, I'm I'm nice. quite sure they're working on it already for sure. There I, there's a lot of there's a lot of genetics in in those organisms in particular that uh, scientists are trying to exploit like it's, DNA uh, splicing. Speaking of genetics, let's move on to the next category but before we do that guys we're gonna take a pause for the cause i'm gonna play a couple of promos a fun independent podcast you should check out and we'll be right back and we're gonna talk about mutants after these messages we'll be right back in a world where so many podcasts offer tv and movie news along comes another one filled to the brim with podcasty goodness that is only slightly better at best. Admit it, you're always looking for a new brand of meaningless movie nonsense in your podcast diet. Look for the 365 Flicks podcast on Twitter, iTunes, Stitcher, and all good third-party podcast apps. You can also swing by the Facebook page. Come join in on the adventures of Kev, a pissy ex-video store clerk. And Chris, a Scottish Whedon Hall. We are your vocal heroes of pissy opinion. We bring you all the latest TV and movie news, reviews, and general geeky rants. As well as a bunch of top fives that you really won't care about. So whether you're Team Iron Man or Team Cap, you're Team Batman or Team Superman, drop on by the 365 Flicks podcast, where the Chris vs. Kev Civil War never stops. This is the podcast you're looking for. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. And I'm Blake from the History of Bad Ideas. And we'll get back to your regularly scheduled program here in just a second, Geek listeners. But we do a weekly podcast called The History of Bad Ideas. Yeah, where we'll discuss things like television or movies or music or games or any other thing that falls into our geek-related uh, podcast knowledge. You can find us on uh, Geek Life Radio, Fridays, 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central. Or Radio Hyphen Blitz, Saturday, 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central. Or you can listen to us whenever the hell you want on iTunes and Stitcher. Check us out. Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. 
Trivia Geeks, the Unpredictable Game Show podcast is back with a brand new season. They've got a new host, new games, and a new day and time. But that's not all. Now you can download their companion app, Triv Now, and play along in real time. Watch Carrie on YouTube as she tries to convince her partner that his dark night hasn't risen in years. Listen on Diamond Club and Alpha Geek Radio, Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern. You can also follow the show on Facebook and Twitter and get all the latest updates and showtimes. The Jock and Nerd Podcast. All right, gang. Hey, before we continue, I just want to say to the listener, if uh, if our show, if you've been listening for a while, and our show gives you one of these, Geek Boner, uh, won't you consider joining our fan club? We have a great fan club. You can find it at jockandnerd.com slash Patreon. A uh, low monthly pledge, you'll be helping out the show cover maintenance costs, equipment issues, but what you're going to get is an RSS feed that you put in your podcast app, and it's an exclusive Jock and Nerd podcast feed with tons of bonus audios. I'm sure there'll be some post-show audio from this show, from our interviews, from our weekly shows, uh, whole episodes, all for as low as a low as dollar a month. Check out the fan club, jockandnerd.com slash Patreon. We'd appreciate it. Do it. Do it now. Just uh, do it. <laughs> Whatever you say. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, Farnsworth. That's what I want to hear. When I talk. clips. That's uh, <laughs> Professor Farnsworth from Futurama, Anthony. He's oh a my, very oh famous God. scientist. Very famous uh, in the science community. All right. So next category, number four, is genetics slash mutants. Everyone's Geek boner. favorite brand of uh, Marvel character, mutants. We love mutants. And uh, Adam, all evolution is based on mutations, but why haven't we seen mutations like we've seen in the X-Men comic books? <laughs> uh, yeah, good question. Um, so <laughs> ongoing my question from people that uh, you know aren't familiar with evolution, but um, evolution's gradual, right? You don't, you don't tend to jump like 10 steps ahead. You Something that causes you a benefit will be passed on to your offspring, and then gradually things kind of change. But um, the only times things change in like massive kind of quick time would be when there's a huge extinction of something. Ah. So the reason mammals, we became so well evolved and, and filled all these niches. Like, again, you think about it, there are whales and dolphins, there are shrews and like little rodents and there are humans. Like we span a huge range, but it was because the dinosaurs all went extinct at once. If that hadn't happened at the end of the Cretaceous period, then we would, mammals would still be little like shrew and uh, like mouse sized organisms, you know? So really like to get, huge amounts of mutation and radiation of, of evolution, you need to have a, one of those events. But even still, you wouldn't end up with <laughs> people that could fly or blast um, laser. Well, humans, are, have, they have stopped completely evolving. So Have well, we, we, though? no reason well, for us to evolve anymore. That's, I don't that, know. That's a, that's a hot kind of topic in human evolution. But, yeah, I mean, it's clearly no longer survival of the fittest, right? You see, like, completely out of shape dumbasses that are reproducing and producing 20 kids. So, I mean... Right. <laughs> Clearly, yeah. it's not just the yeah the fittest, most qualified individuals that are passing on this. Just team. watch the beginning of idiocracy. Let, let, me, let me ask you a question, Adam. It was like, can we point to things like you know, like human beings have our darker complexion? Is it that human evolution because they lived in an area where it was super hot and the sun was always out? Yeah, exactly. They have they have more pigment in their skin to prevent them from burning their skin and getting cancers and things. Right. That's now, now this is total bro science right here, but I heard. A long time ago, that the reason why Asian people have a lot of more of the the, the the slanted eye is because at that era and that time in the world, wherever they were living, there was a lot of dust. That's interesting. I I don't want to offend a that whole. Might lot be bro Asian people. <laughs> well, uh, I'm Asian, so their house more. <laughs> Anthony's half Filipino, so it's fine. He's giving okay, you a pass. Okay. Call the Swiffer. Yeah, that's why I'm asking the question. <laughs> that's interesting. But, I, but, I, I don't know. I heard that. I don't know where I heard that. I it, it wasn't was from a racist I it was, motherfucker. I thought, was, I thought it was wind or something. Might have been wind. Yeah, might have been I mean, wind. Yeah. The, yeah, wind. Wind would make sense to me a little more, and also yeah. even like, even the brightness or like the the conditions of the atmosphere. Because I mean, if you think back, or well, I, I think back to like back in the day when the Eskimos and Inuit would wear like snow goggles. They just their small slits that only let a little bit of light in. Um, right. right. So. Yeah, yeah, the wind, the wind makes a little more sense to me, or, or dust, any anything that that would that would I think push a, evolution evolution in that direction eventually. Right? Well, if that if the dust was true, I would think that the desert dwellers would have those slits. 
Like that's also, like, that's yeah, actually it might be the wind. Point. You might be right. The wind. It might be the wind. But yes. uh, I've never actually thought about why the uh, why the Asian eye structure is the way it is. But uh, there must be there must be some kind of driving force behind it. it either that or or honestly, it, it could have just been that <laughs> that there was some kind of mutation that that was more attractive to like females like thousands of years ago. So and would like psychic powers fall under this category? <laughs> he goes right back to fucking the, the the out the out of left field shit. No, I want to I want to know. There's got to be some kind of because look, we're gonna get into the psychic children of China. There is something. I, I, well, you know, it's been so long. There's got to be some kind of mutation that's benefiting. That's just it, it. You know, it's a freak mutant gene that's giving somebody some kind of extra ability. Well, again, I I, I do have a few examples of actual mutants that have like crazy powers, but. Uh... But yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that one. Well, someone explain. What's what is the psychic children of China? What do we get? What, what is this? Adam, have you heard about this? Well, I, I mean, the U.S. also had a team of psychics back in the day that used to like search for and attack things. Like there are the men who stare at ghosts. The men who stare at ghosts. They tried to move things. Uh, so I mean, we Did they move anything? I don't know if they actually <laughs> no, they moved not. the goats. <laughs> No, I have, I have, I mean, I've heard the term the psychic children of China before, but I mean, if anybody's doing crazy scientific experiments right now, yeah, I would point towards the Chinese because they have the the resources and the people and kind of the weird disposition. To I've it. I've yeah. heard a lot. There's a podcast called Stuff They Don't Want You to Know, and they just a recent episode was about the psychic. Does China have a psychic child? Uh, army, oh, you, psychic, you Imran listening to a, a conspiracy podcast? No, it's no not. Way. It's not. It's a really good show. Alex Jones. It's not. No, it's a couple <laughs> of dudes, and they're like, it's stuff. They don't really. They just talk about you know the possibilities. But uh, according to some articles, the right. Chinese have been Chinese government has been uh, they've been nurturing these super psychics for like twenty five years. Allegedly, by nineteen ninety seven, a hundred thousand of these children had been recognized. Um, mm-hmm. So some of the powers that they found. Uh, was one skill the children imagine uh, were able to develop a psychic writing, a technique where they were asked to imagine some written words on a blank piece of paper inside a closed pencil case. The case would be opened a short time later, and on it were the words written in pencil. And they would write the words. There was also other ones where they would read, they would crumple up a piece of paper and hold it up and like listen to it and be able to read it. Uh, there was another one where yeah. pe- they, these children were able to see with their ears, nose, and mouth and tongue when blindfolded. Like crazy so, shit like this. So- those kinds of experiments, though, the problem is that they're, like, very prone to experimental bias in some way or another. Sure. Like, even, even say, the, the experimenter's, like, tapping his foot in a certain way or something. If I mean, if you're this kid who's been blindfolded for months, yeah, you'll start picking up on subliminal cues. Sure. And, and be able to, you know, infer that, like, your brain will jump to things before, like, you might think you're being psychic. But you're actually just picking up subliminally the little it's things. It's just context. And you, yeah. Especially you think all psychics are bullshit? I do. Yeah, yeah. I don't believe so in that. that kind of thing. Uh, oh, man. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know yeah. for sure. I mean, who knows? But I have a hard time kind of I – th- I, I think what psychics are able to do, I think they have a unique brain structure that allows them to pick up on patterns. Right. What about remote viewing? Because the government used to use that. Mm-hmm. Oh, they, yeah, they tried to. Uh, again, that I have a hard time kind of viewing. I, I view it as the same kind of thing where it's like you know, these people have been exposed to and or have read thousands of articles or whatever. So they start picking up patterns and they can kind of – preemptively predict what might be happening and sometimes it's right they're just really good visualizers i guess yeah just and and able to again like in their their brains work in a way that they can interpret patterns really effectively so that they can you're you're killing imran over here the 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 master conspiracist (laughs) i'll tell you wants to believe all this shit why would they lie the brain is still like more (laughs) magic than science to us we don't actually know what most of it is but i don't See how again an electrical signal in your head could move something uh, yeah, or whatever, yeah. but I, but but again, I'm you know we don't know. I have a whole different offshoot of this. Oh yeah. Okay, so we're talking about genetics now. All right, now do you think that there's going to be in the future or now where people are fucking around with DNA and creating, you know, enhanced humans or humans with like bird D- DNA yeah. or whatever? Like for eyesight or whatever kind of bullshit, uh, like kind of like cross, you cross know, species. splicing. Yeah. yeah. Is that possible? Is that what you're getting at? Yeah. Is that, uh, or is that completely implausible? 
Well, again, the, the problem with like gene transfer and gene splicing and stuff is that often a gene is not just controlled by its by itself. Like it's got it's got something before it um, that tells the genome that this should be activated. It's got all these other kind of bits and pieces. But presuming we could just like figure some of that out, yeah, I think perhaps we could start splicing in certain parts of different genomes into the human. I mean, didn't they human. grow an ear on a rat? I don't know why you'd do that, but it's weird. But they definitely did. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's messed up. And I also kind of, <laughs> I liked in the uh, the Amazing Spider-Man series how they kind of took Oscorp and made him like an animal genetic splicing. And all the villains were based on, you know, these animal splicing experiments. I thought that was kind of an interesting idea. I mean, again, I think you can take certain things. Like, again, like they're they're looking at a lot of invertebrates and like random sea organisms that have these things that make them resistant to like cancers or resistant to certain um, certain other effects, but like if you're talking about improving, like making my eyesight like an eagle's, like yeah, that would yeah. be, that would be controlled by hundreds of genes. Yeah, you know, like because mm. there's things that control the musculature around sure. the eyes, there's sure. the actual eye itself, there's the pigment and the pupil. Like you know, there's so many different factors. I mean, eventually, I'm sure we'll. Yeah, try. Uh, yeah, we're not, <laughs> we'll we're not at that point. Together. I would equate it to uh, this is very simple, but I equate it to putting a square peg in a round hole. Like, there, there's there's just two different <laughs> yeah, exactly. things. Not gonna fit. So, so, and if and if you put again, if you put a gene into the human genome that's not activated, it doesn't matter what the hell it is. It'll it'll just be junk. You know, it doesn't do anything. Yeah. Or it'll fuck up something that actually does something important. Ugh. What if you switch things on and off in, in someone's DNA? Like you know, the DNA has all the information, even the flaws, even the bad characteristics, yep. and you can just like turn all the good ones on and turn the ones that are undesirable off. Well, that kind of stuff is what we're probably pretty close to like we they've they've mapped the human human genome quite a while ago and now they've they've honed in on they've actually mapped most of the actual active genes and they're they're focusing in now on the junk dna and stuff that they thought used to be garbage they need to veto yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> but in that they're finding all these things that that affect the actual primary genome so that's where they're again they're 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 figuring out that why can't we turn this disease causing gene off? It's because it's actually controlled partially by something in the junk or whatever we haven't actually figured out yet. So so we'll get to that point soon, I think. There's pros and cons to that, you know, ethically and scientifically. Pros being, yeah, now no more birth defects, no more mental retardation or, or muscular dystrophy. Cons being, it, it, I think it's going to slide to where everyone is just going to want the best genes. Everyone's going to look the same. There's going to be there's going to be no Danny DeVitos, which is actually a con because now there's no variety, there's no quirkiness, there's no. Yeah, but we'll find randomness. ways. To, we'll find ways to hate each other anyway. That's true. <laughs> Even though we all will be like, blonde haired, blue eyed, white fucker people, we're well, still going to be. Uh, it'll be a war of thoughts. Yes. Well, disease is the main. I mean, disease controls our population, right? Yeah. If, we, if everybody if everybody was healthy, we'd be completely fucked. But uh, we did just discover seven planets in uh, you know. I saw that. That was crazy. They're, they're, they're only they're only thirty nine light years yeah, away. That's so, no problem. You know. Maybe they'd be like maybe they'd be <laughs> sterile, and you can only make babies through uh, like 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 in Krypton in the Man of Steel. You, you can only make babies through. Uh, the codex. You gotta have, yeah. You gotta have the codex. Uh, but but I do have a couple of actual mutants. Oh, here that, uh, okay. That, that, that okay. Exist. So back in like the eighties, there was a skier from Finland, and actually, this is what we were talking about earlier. The EPO, yeah, uh, like yeah. doping and stuff. Yeah. So their their family line actually has uh, a gene that produces twenty percent more red blood cells and and uh, hemoglobin. So they're able to. The, the skier won like eight gold medals. Whoa. Um, and uh, because he just he he had crazy endurance because of this mutation, um, you've obviously seen the the rubber people too, right? The people that have no like the guy that can squeeze himself through a tennis racket. Well, how, wait, yeah. what? Yeah. What? How does that work? You can Google it. Like, there's a guy that can squeeze himself into a box that's like come on, man, two feet by two feet, or put himself through a uh, the tennis racket. Wait, but what but, happens to his boat? But his uh... so, so the, the collagen, the, the connective oh, tissue. Yeah. All right. He's got a mutation in the collagen, so it holds together, but it's ultra elastic. Um, wow! So his, his limbs bend backwards. He can, He's plastic man. Exactly. Um, there's wasn't there the, he was on that show that, that are you referring to that show that they had on like Discovery Channel or something? Where it was Stan, like all, there was all Stan Lee Super Stan, yeah, Stan, Stan Lee had a show. Yes. yes. He's definitely been on the uh, on the Discovery Channel before, uh, but yeah. he's not the only one. There's a bunch of them out there that have had that mutation. And usually, again, yeah. they're family lines, right? These these people are these people are passing these on. So 
their offspring are going to have them. But there's but there's no real like, you know, it's not like they're out there hunting for food, so it's not going to cause a benefit that would you know last forever. But uh, there's a kid who had something called myostatin related muscular hypertrophy, so he can lift like ridiculous amounts of weight. Oh, he's that little Jack six year old, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've seen uh, him. <laughs> that guy's awesome. And so that's a mutation in the gene for myostatin. That's what I'm talking which, about. See, which, now limits, we're somewhere. Which, which limits muscle growth. So he just produces myostatin constantly. So he, if, if he's lifting weights and working out, he can just endlessly put on muscle. Wow. Um, wow. There are humans that don't need more than like two to four hours of sleep. Margaret, Margaret Thatcher was actually one of them. Really? Uh, yeah. She had a mutation in a particular gene. So their brains just function and they don't, they don't suffer any effects of like sleep deprivation. Wow. That's a super, uh, see, these are superpowers. And lastly, there there is this is this is one of the I didn't realize I didn't believe this when I read it, but uh, there's a guy who has increased like density and durability. He's essentially Bruce Willis from Unbreakable. Oh um, shit! So he has an osteo like his he has a mutation in the gene for osteoplasts and osteo uh, sites, so the things that form your your bone cells. And for whatever reason, they just adhere like super strong, and they just the there's no space between them, so his bone density is like off the charts. He's Luke Cage. He's Luke so Cage. He's, yeah, he's essentially. Well, I think you could still shoot him. <laughs> but no, uh, we should try. Well, they that. could probably. They don't want his his DNA and trying to replicate that. Again, I, yeah, these people. I'm sure. I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure these people have provided blood samples. All these the people should be tested on that show. Stanley Superhumans. It was uh, on History was Channel. Great. Was actually really cool. And that's all he did was he found these freaks. Like there was this other dude who. When running, I, I like, don't you know, think he was actually. You're, you're, I don't think he was actually finding any freaks. He was sitting in there narrating while someone else was doing the work. <laughs> well, he wasn't. He was like <laughs> already eighty years old when the he show just was slapped on. Slapped his name on. Yeah, yeah, like he did with all the comic books that he came up with. But they found the dude who could run forever. Like his body didn't build up yeah. the lactic actually, acid lactic to tire acid, him out, yeah. and he ran like for, for days on he end. Actually, he could just keep yeah, running. He actually he had. I think. It, I think it was actually that he had an increase in the enzyme that breaks down the lactic ah, that's so he that still, yeah. he, he was still producing it, but, but it would get could, broken down. He could just get rid of it super fast. It's awesome. But yeah, that's I, crazy. I, yeah, that was a good one too. Sorry. Have you, have you what seen the guy, it? have you seen kick-ass Adam? Oh the yeah. Movie kick-ass. So is that possible? Yeah. So someone that has their bones, just like, like let a lot of metal in their bones. So their, their bones are a little harder maybe. And they just have their nerve ending for pain is not there anymore. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, you you could definitely, in some way or another, turn off. Uh, you could do it through a number of mechanisms, probably. Just you could do it physically by like damaging somebody's nerve endings. Turn off right. the pain uh, receptors. But but yeah, the the more technical way would be to go in and like fuck with the hormones that uh, that transmit the pain response or the or to disconnect like some of the the uh, Nerves and neurons that transmit that spinal back tap, into, yeah, back into your back into your central nervous system. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So you'd still be getting hurt on the outside, but you just wouldn't feel it. Feel it. Yeah. Um, in terms of like, in terms of fusing metal to your bones and making you stronger and stuff. I don't know. That guy I mean, should be an MMA that's, fighter. That's like Wolver, like the Wolverine yes. kind of yes. uh, right, right. difficulties, right? Like, he, <laughs> like it's uh. Yeah, well, the, the, the reason I asked is like in metal. Ander, like I don't know if you've heard of the guy Anderson Silva. He broke his. Yeah, I believe yeah. yeah his, I mean, I, 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 yeah, he broke his his leg Shin? in a fight, and he's now he's got like I don't know if it's titanium. I'm just throwing that out there, but he's got metal in his bone now. A plate, yeah. So are they are they giving him shit for like being enhanced? Is anybody uh, causing a ruckus over this? Or I mean, like people people on like bro science are like, okay. oh well, what if he kicks you? He's well, kicking now, you with a metal well, but metal you, bat. Here's the other thing, you know, the, the, how that works. Those blade the 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 prosthetic yeah, blade runners. Like, is that not an advantage to make you run faster than uh, someone with their legs? I think, if, yeah, if those blades were tuned properly, those guys would be way faster. They'd be flying because <laughs> that thing will just pu- shoot you forward. But they, I mean, they they manufacture them or like or tune them so that they're more similar to like an actual, you know, physical like physiological response that you would get in a normal person. I would want, I'd be like, can you tweak my blade so I can jump over my house? That would be cool. <laughs> uh, so this genetics category, the mutant category is so fascinating. I just want to mention one last thing, going back to the psychics. If you are not watching Legion on FX, it's really fucking good. There is a couple episodes in and they're doing a great job kind of starting as a uh, mental illness as a base. And they're going and they're figuring out this guy's powers. He is like a mega level mutant most powerful mutant in the world and the what triggers him and then you learn about different powers like there's a dude who is a memory mutant and he can go into your memory and 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 tweak things and they're learning that he's transporting people but it's all 
based on mental illness and it makes you think like is it was it mental illness or is it your powers manifesting in some cases and like do crazy people think they have powers probably and maybe they well, do look at autistic people man yeah. like the, yeah. so many autistic people are actually highly super intelligent yes like they, they have their they might have social issues in some way or another right but yeah. they, their brains can do mathematical things that nobody can explain. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Higher level. That's kind of a mutant power. That's awesome. Legion is great. It's so good. I love it. Do they do they play up the uh, the connection to Charles Xavier at not, all, or is it ignored? Not yet. It's no? uh, pretty much they, it's just him, and you're learning about his powers, and the government's chasing him here, and there's a group of people who want to help him nourish his powers, and they want to use him, and he and then he's he's schizophrenic, or is he? He's got mental illness. I wonder if they're going to mention. Uh, Xavier at all because it's the same name it's David Haller his son uh, but uh, Legion is awesome all right so next category we got freak accidents unexplained accidents another altered human category and in your notes Adam here you say this is like a lot of the DC stuff which I, I, I kind of make sense even with the, the TV show CW the flash it's always everything was caused by this particle accelerator that exploded but what is that science? Why would a particle accelerator fucking exploding do different things to different people? It's like the radiation from Marvel. That's yeah. I'm actually kind of regretting putting this one in there. Oh, no. I, I, I did. I did a lot of background research on this, and like, there's nothing. Like, it's it's all this kind of. Uh, it's all we're just gonna throw things out there right now. But it's uh, just there. Yeah. So like, so again, like a particle accelerator. I mean, they have the the ability to create singularity, like wormholes and things, right? So. And time travel, and it's just like a MacGuffin, really, to get you. Yeah, exactly. But like, but why an exploding particle accelerator would give somebody super speed? I, I, I don't know. Especially given that, like, you know, it really the whole story is like for like Flash is he got splashed with those chemicals. Yeah, yeah. The lightning, the, the lightning, lightning was caused yeah. by the particle accelerator. Yeah. It wasn't really the particle accelerator; it was like the lightning and the chemicals and whatnot. But, um, but yeah. I, Explaining that, I, I really don't know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's not too much. Sci- I mean, that's mostly all. Yeah, that's the made up side, yeah. the most made up sciencey yeah. thing out of all of these. I love the Flash. Don't get me wrong; he's yeah. a cool character, yeah. and he and he and he actually, well, he lets DC fix. Now, do his powers make scientific sense? Yeah, in terms of vibrating and phasing through walls, like a lot of that. Uh, to my head, I was like, yeah, that's that's solid. Of course, if you could vibrate molecules, <laughs> of course, it is to him, run. Well, yeah, but if you, vibrate, if you vibrate matter at a certain speed, it becomes in solid. So, yeah, you would you would go through things. But, like, again, the problem would be the human body being able to withstand that kind of. See, I just don't understand the ru- I just don't understand the running part, because, like, he would be moving so fast that his, his skin would be flying. Over. He would have to eat That's, so yeah, much yeah, food. He would, he would, he would have to eat so that. much food, <laughs> calories to keep him going. That's that's also true, but I mean, again, in the comic, it's that he's powered by the speed force, which is this like battery of some kind, right? I think it's. I mean, it's yeah, it's like a. Yeah, it's, it's, a like, it's like it's, it's like its own. It's yeah. like its own sentient thing, actually. That lives, yeah, and and chooses people, yeah. Because like as as one flash comes in, they take the speed from the others and stuff, right? So it's like a yeah, it's like some kind of central power hub, and I guess that would make sense again if you were if these guys were wearing like suits or something and were like. Or had rings like the Green Lanterns or something, and they were like connected to some kind of central hub. But yeah, I, I have a hard time seeing how the how the whole thing <laughs> would work. But uh, but again, and, and again, like traveling at the speed of light is also like, <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna rip you up. So <laughs> hopefully, this Justice League movie, you know, they're, it's a lot more of a sciency uh, flash, Ezra Miller's flash, and the, the suit is part like stuff he stole from NASA to resist heat and temperature, and Bruce helps him. I thought that was a really cool addition, actually. The fact that they they thought through the fact that he'd be going so fast that he would need like plates that would stop his skin from yeah, burning off. Yeah, that is that's not bad. Like that's a pretty good touch there. But coming through the Earth's atmosphere, you're going at a fraction of the speed the Flash would be. So, that's but uh, but at the same time, I mean, it's uh, it, I think it's a cool approach. Hopefully, it looks cool on screen as it does in the picture. Another fun uh, uh, villain in this category that's totally implausible that's fun to think about is the Sandman. Think about what the Sandman actually does. None of it makes sense. <laughs> Another just random thing explodes and affects him. But this guy goes from, like, solid to does does he have organs? Because when Spider-Man punches the Sandman, it just goes through his body. So he could become solid. He could become hard. And then he could just dissipate and be dust like what the fuck kind of science is this he doesn't what's inside him how is he alive yeah sandman i think is one of the more <laughs> implausible scientific <laughs> things out there that's like that's magic at that yeah 
I think the, the the reason why this category is the way it is and can explain everything is freak accident slash unexplained. You can't explain it. Oh, that's run, a, that's a good point. You're, Let's you're move asking on. for a, <laughs> you're asking for reasons why things are unexplained. Really? What does it matter? All right, let's move on. Uh, <laughs> l- uh, last one, maybe one extra <laughs> one. Uh, you have Alien, which uh, this is a great category. You got, you know, your Supermans, and uh, you got uh, Green Lantern type, uh, his mythology with alien technology. Um, how, I mean, this could go off into... <laughs> Uh, do aliens exist? Where? Uh, how do you want to approach this one? How plausible is this when it's done in the comic books? Well, in my in my humble like scientific opinion, I think it's really silly to assume that we're the only form of life. Absolutely, yes. right. Every time we actually are able to see something in a neighboring universe, we find planets like ours, right? So, and that's also assuming that life will look like and needs our conditions to to carry on, right? Which is ridiculous right. I think yeah well. that that's the thing that, that when i learned in college is we uh, there there was like we did like some sort of um math equation and the, and the the percentage was really low but that's assuming that you human life on other planets would need all the all the same uh, things we need on earth well you're talking about carbon based life forms that have to breathe oxygen and yeah and that's the only perspective we have like we don't have any other perspective now, that's our prob- that's our perspective yeah. Yeah. Now, what's the probability of other life forms that are not carbon based and that their ability to even come here and do shit. And I think part of the problem is if it's truly alien, we don't even know what it's going to look like or what to look for. It's alien. And we never know what it is. Absolutely. I, I, I don't know. It's uh, a, <laughs> that's a hard thing to, uh, to, to guess about. Do you, there. do you think the I, government has alien technology now? Personally, <laughs> I, I don't, I, wow. I don't know. I, no? uh, I would, seems like there's too much kind of rhetorical crap out there to, to for it to be completely made up. But at the same time, people are pretty messed up and they'll make up a lot of crazy things to explain things That's that make true. sense. Right. So I don't know. It's uh, I think the government's probably been trying to make flying saucers for a long time. And that's what was happening at Area 51. You know, you were seeing experimental aircraft and things like that. But uh, they're like trying to scare the shit out of our enemies. They're like, let's make this and we'll <laughs> scare the shit out of everybody. And then we'll be at an advantage because we but got I, the nukes. But I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, I, I definitely believe there's alien life out there. I don't know that they've come to find us yet. And if they did come to find us, like, again, I, I do believe that they probably wouldn't even bother with us because we're probably so – Well, the other thing is they may, they, but, uh, they may have come and we were just not here, you know? Like on, on the scale of the planet and people, yeah. They may have come or they're, they're – I mean we're talking about light years. Right. Away. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm talking. Yeah, yeah, space travel. So that, that, that's a long impossible. fucking time. Yeah. Well, like, we, well we've yeah, been. Shooting that's the thing is that even if they even if they exist. Exactly. Well, we've been shooting radio signals into space for years, right? Like, and nothing. We, we, nobody's we answered these, back. Yep. No, but but some of these radio signals will take hundreds of years to get to a source. So it's like, you know, yeah. It's, so it could be that yeah, there is somebody out there, but by the time the signal gets back, it's going to be 800 years yeah. past. Yeah. That's a, that's a, uh, we no won't know. Far. Plus, like again, again, until we can accelerate something to the speed of light, it's pretty much useless. Kind of trying to figure that's out how plausible, we can do it. Though? Yeah, can we build a craft that will sustain that? That's what you got to crack to get moving. I'm gonna put a caveat in here. I'm not a physicist. Okay. I have no idea. But, uh, that's, uh, oh yeah, that's right. But lights. I mean, light speed is that's it's kind of like absolute zero. It's one of those things where it's theoretically possible. It definitely is. Yeah. But can you actually get something there? We uh, we'll never know. Like it's uh, until we can actually do it. Like they're building particle accelerators in the center of the Earth right now, right? Like not the center, but you know, kilometers below the Earth in Europe, with the intense purpose of, of trying to discover more subatomic particles and figure out how we that can- hadron collider. That's a fucking crazy thing too, isn't it? Yeah, they're building one that's like ten times the size of the holy hadron shit. <laughs> oh, um, holy zombie Jesus! Is it CERN that's oh. doing it, or someone else? Pardon me? Is it CERN that's doing it, or is it someone else? Uh, I think that I, I think it's a joint project. Of, I think the, like the Chinese and everybody are involved as well. I don't oh, think it's just shit. European. I think it's I think the world it's a is trying to crack project. this. That's crazy. Speaking of light, so uh, Green Lantern, the, you him using alien technology, the amazing visuals of uh, this ring that create this light that 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 becomes anything the the user wills it, and it's light, but then it becomes solid. It can be used to attack, to lift things, to block things. Is there anything in laser research that's getting anything close to 
a hard light situation. Well, it's funny. When I sent you this, I was like, oh, we're so far off of this, it's ridiculous. There's no way. <laughs> uh, but actually, yeah. very recently, a couple of scientists um, figured out that you can slam some photons together. So you can take two light particles, essentially, and create matter from them. Um, Whoa, but they're, okay. they're, created, they're taking two photons and creating a positron and an electron. So like the two smallest particles out there. Like you're not, uh, so it's a small scale right now. It's not at a yeah. very large, <laughs> and, uh, noticeable scale. Could you manufacture scale. it into a ring to do something cool like that? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, it, it, it is possible. Again, it's the same. It actually it, it goes back to the same Einstein theories. Um, they're just, again... I mean, this shows you how smart that man was. I think he was a mutant of various kinds. But yeah, uh, dude, he was like he's he's mailing the shit way before all this. But they're just catching up. No, he was just Jewish. (laughs) (laughs) Is that you? Very smart, very smart man. But um, very smart Jewish guy. So yeah, I mean, you can create you can create matter from light. They've shown that's possible now. But uh, yeah, I mean. Green Lanterns, it's awesome. Like making the giant punchy fist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, how much fun is that? And then also regarding Superman, really, how would you explain his flight? What is propelling him? That okay. That, that's that's something I've thought about a lot too. Like the, you have so for Superman, they have the solar like battery aspect of his right. His powers, power. the yellow sun. Yeah, yellow sun powers him. And then you have the the fact that he's from an alien planet, so he's super strong and super durable. And yeah. they kind of somehow pack that into the right. fact that he can fly, right? Like it's like yeah. he can just jump super high, right? And suddenly it turns into right. flight. It, it, well, it used it used to be that yeah, it was it, well, it used to be that he could jump super high, and if he's coming from a planet where the gravity is not is stronger, right? I guess right. Would that be the case? The gav- gravity would have to be stronger at yeah, the planet that, he's that from. Was, that was like, technically he could jump up. What they tried to do in Man of Steel was like he jumps up into the air, and then when he's in the air. He punches the air in the direction he wants to go, and the force of his fist just carries him that way. Yeah, I mean, oh, okay. I, I appreciated the Man of Steel where he you know they show float, they show stuff floating around him, trying yeah. to explain it. I also the- that that actually would make a little bit of sense actually if he's because if he's if he's able to jump at a certain speed so that he's like pushing the air in front of him it, faster than the it, speed of sound. It would propel him whatnot. like a jet almost, maybe. Well, it would, it, would, it, would, it would create like an area of less resistance in front of him. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Because he, he, he'd be pushing the, like, the air particles aside, essentially, and creating like a, a, a negative space. Right, he's so slicing he, so he, through so he, so the air. Forward it. But yeah. I mean, that would, that would take an immense amount of power and speed. Like he'd, Again, he'd have to be accelerating way faster than the speed of sound to have that happen. Like, I mean, sonic booms are just air being displaced by right. something moving faster than yeah. the speed of sound, right? Yeah. I but, like, I mean, yeah. I like the Man of Steel, how they kind of equated it to, to jet planes. I have this article from Popular Science. They have another theory. They're like, one possibility is that he is able to emit high velocity streams of air through the pores of his skin. So his body pushes air down and it uh, propels him forward. Could be possible. <laughs> he'd need he'd need like a very intricate system of uh, capillaries and tubes fucking, and whatnot. Yeah, to yeah. Out of man, yeah. Hey, it's Kryptonian. I mean, it's alien. But I mean, the super strength thing and when it works, it's the same principle as Aquaman, right? Like they they say, like the pressure and the and everything else, the bottom of the ocean makes Aquaman super strong ah. um, and super durable, right? It's, it's it's essentially the same argument, like for Superman and Aquaman. But why can't Aquaman fly? Then that would be a that's a good point. But it, never, again, never tried. <laughs> True enough. I mean, at the same time, Superman <laughs> Superman can survive in space. You know, he doesn't need to breathe air. Yeah, that's true. Like, I, uh, oh, man. The, uh, the heat vision thing is always a fun one, too. That was, I never really... Uh... How would that work? How the fuck would that work? <laughs> well, that's okay. So so you have, like, the, the deep ocean fish, like yeah. the flashlight fish, yes. and, like, the, ang- the angler fish, and all those things that are, like, bioluminescent, right? Right. So they can create... It's called a chemical or, or bioluminescence, and so it's just like a, it's basically just this particular protein that they produce, and then an enzyme cuts it off, and when it when the thing breaks up, it creates a little bit of light, and so they have these organs that pack all these enzymes in one place, so they can do that. So you could, <laughs> again, I think you could make Superman probably flash his eyes red and look scary. Oh in yeah, terms of like yeah, emitting an actual laser. Out. Yeah, because because again, to create even just to create the light, I was again just did some quick random calculations, but like. It takes a lot of energy, yeah. <laughs> especially from from a deep ocean fish's point of view. But like, just to produce a little bit of glowy light yeah. takes a lot of energy. Yeah. So to to blaze something out of your eyes would be, he might be able to. Like, if you were able to do it, you would just die immediately after. <laughs> yeah, but, so uh, one, we can only do it once. 
You can do it, but you can only do it once. But I always loved that, the heat vision. Yeah, kinda... yeah. Ah, uh, aliens. All right, well, that is the major six categories, but I want to finish up talking about this possible seventh a little bit, which is robots. Artificial intelligence. We're just going to uh, wing it on this one, such as the vision. And, uh, you know, right now in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they're doing this uh, life model decoy uh, arc, which is kind of uh, science enhanced by magic. But it's all it's very much artificial. Let's give DC some love. Yeah. And uh, Red Tornado. Red Tornado is their oh, robot. Red, Red That's Tornado. Right. That's right. He's there. That's a good pull. Come on, man. He's Red like, Tornado. He's what? like their vision. Don't for, hey, don't Who forget about... Don't forget about Cyborg. Well, but Cyborg isn't artificial intelligence. He's yeah. more tech, tech based. He's alien as well, right? I okay. Oh, okay. Well, now he's alien. Cyborg Motherbox. Superman. Cyborg Superman. Metallo. Metallo. That's a good one. Metallo. That's a good one. Brainiac. Yeah, Brainiac man. is the artificial intelligence. And uh, to some extent, I would think, look, we have these robots making cars and factories. Uh, they, we have these robots that are beating chess masters. They're beating, we have Alexa. We have Alexa that will Alexa will play the Jock and Nerd podcast, listener. Just say, Alexa, play the Jock and Nerd podcast. She'll do it, which is crazy. So there's a little robot, and there's like there's this Bebo. There's little uh, devices that are coming out that, that will listen to you. Uh, there's robots. Oh, they beat Jeopardy contestants, and they're getting smarter and smarter. And, and some of these people working at Google, even they can't figure out how these computers are learning things. Yeah, Watson is the Jeopardy. Watson is the Jeopardy one. So, I mean, at some point, Judgment Day is going to happen. The shit, they're going to take over. Well, well, a friend of mine posted this on Facebook the other day. There are, there's already artificial intelligence producing artificial intelligence. Oh, no, it's over, people. When the <laughs> robots already- start making the robots, it's over. Good it Lord. Is, it's actually happening because they realized that to get technology to where they want it, they're going to need the help of the, <laughs> of the technology. Yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's one of those catch-22s, right? Like, we can do it. It'll take us way longer. So it's uh, I don't know. We're, we lean on technology like it's 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 ludicrous how prolific smartphones are now, yeah, and yeah. how people can't even have a good debate because they don't have access to a phone or computer. It's, <laughs> Remember uh, the days when you'd have like you'd talk about movies and debate actors, and you couldn't just look up who was in what, and you had to fight. Me like, no, he wasn't in that movie, you idiot. There was really no way to prove it. Unless you, you had, you had to use your fucking memory? Yeah. Conversations were more fun. <laughs> they were. Because I just Google it, it's over. And then you're like, oh, okay, I don't want to talk about that anymore. That's it. That's how I got half of my knowledge on this show. I've just been I've just been Googling things. I've been still in front of the computer. <laughs> I'm telling no, Google, don't get me wrong, Google's amazing. It's uh Google's fantastic. scary though. Well, again, it artificial intelligence is scary, like the Skynet and uh all that stuff always like Terminator always actually scared me a little bit. You know? yeah. yeah. And every, I mean, I've always said when 3D printers start printing 3D printers, the fucking game is over. We're done because they're going to rise up and take over. So all it takes is for one of these computers to get uh, connected to a 3D printer. They start printing out their body, move their consciousness over. And uh, we don't know uh, who is a robot. I mean, but AI is the key to a lot of these other technologies we've been talking about, right? Like the, an Iron Man suit yeah. does not work yeah. without artificial intelligence. Right, you can, yeah. This is actually this is actually in actually the uh, the Iron Man comics recently. The problem with Riri Williams' suit was that she couldn't control it fast enough, so oh. she needed Tony Stark's AI to make it work properly. And again, you you, you can't again we we need better AI, so we're going to keep developing it. And the only way to develop it better is to use AI. So have the we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna we are gonna we could possibly make ourselves obsolete. It's kind of ridiculous to think about. Well, you know, it goes back to like the singularity we talked about. I mean, I kind of feel like at some point we will be able to upload our consciousness and kind of, and this is what Agents of Shield right now is they're doing. There's a thing called a framework. They're uploading consciousness into a virtual world while the LMD with the same memories takes over, and then the whole paranoid uh, discussions of are you the robot? Are you the robot? Uh, it's, it's really good. Like, what would happen if uh, this would happen? So, Agents of the Shield is good again. <laughs> it kind of is. This middle arc. Well, plus this is like they. This may be the last season. I feel like they're going all out, uh, and uh, it's really fun. Anthony, I want you to catch up because I want to talk about it next week. Yeah, I would love to. I mean, I would love to catch up. I'll just preface this, Adam, by saying you you've listened to the show, right? Yep. Or you, you've been listening to the show, so you know that Imran just likes everything. <laughs> and I have heard you mock him for it. <laughs> I don't like Powerless. I'll leave, I'll leave it at that. I don't, I, I'll leave it at that. So take what he just said about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and we'll see. Oh, dude, okay. it, it got better. I'll tell you what. Powerless is a piece of shit. Look, I'm, I'm not. I can't. <laughs> I'm not catching. I haven't caught up on S.H.I.E.L.D., but I do like some of the things they're doing. You guys catch up on the LMD arc. It's really good. We will discuss it. I'm also a very positive, like, 
person in terms of these comic movies and stuff, though. So I, I understand where he's coming from. Like, oh, there you go. I do like Man of Steel. Uh, Batman versus Superman was just ridiculous. But like again, there's you know, I try to take the oh, positive. Oh, dude, Imran gave it a seven out of ten. No, I, I, saw, I know. I heard that. Imran gave Batman a. That's the extended edition. <laughs> no, so look, uh, Adam. <laughs> Shut up. You gave the regular version a six out of ten. Shut up. I'm changing the topic. Adam, uh, out of all these uh, superhero <laughs> movies, what what are some that have had have done it right? What are some of the better examples of science in the superhero movies? In in terms of science, yeah. Ah, uh, that's uh, oh. I don't even know how to answer that actually. <laughs> like a lot of them are are just. I mean, <laughs> it kind of just relates to what we were just talking to, right? So it's. It, I, there is no real science in them. I, yeah, nobody's doing it right. Um, in terms of the ones that are good, like Civil War, like again, certain Marvel flicks are good. DC's not doing great, but um, science-wise, again, yeah, the movies take way more liberties than the comics. I sure, think. sure. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's no, there's no real bait. Like Deadpool is, you can't just lop off your hand and grow a little baby hand later. <laughs> as much as that would be great, but uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Yeah, I guess there isn't really. A movie that tries to really ground. Well, Unbreakable would be the. I was one. thinking, yeah, something like that, like something like. Uh, and again, Rick I mean, or, that's that's clearly feasible. Like there is a guy that has that kind of glass bones, but... the glass bones guy. The dur- oh no, the, and the durability guy, yeah, yeah. Uh, so well, I want to wrap up this whole thing. This has been so great, Adam. I found a job for you. I was looking at some articles, and I think this this article in oh, here, Lord. this article right here, talks about. Uh, this dude, Jim Kakalios, who's a physics p- professor at the University of Minnesota, he was the science consultant for the amazing Spider-Man movies. So I was like, wow, that some of these movies are actually, they're trying to find science consultants. So he worked a lot on making the, you know, the web effect, the, 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 the stretchability of it and how it acted in the movie to, to help make it look real. Uh, but even he uh, admitted, like, he would need a backpack of silk to, like, keep his webs going. Um, you know, Sorry, so he was there. on the Amazing Spider-Man or the original? No, Spider-Man? the Amazing Spider-Man, the uh, Garfield. So, so those ones again, like yeah. it's a metal reel. They never really explain it. It goes from being like a shooty wire to suddenly he's got a web. But I don't know. Anyway, right? No, well, but it's also inconsistent <laughs> because that's amazing, though. It's a, it's inconsistent in the sense that if you think about the Gwen's the ending, uh, if you haven't seen it, <laughs> spoiler, spoiler alert. the Gwen Stacy scene. You know, it's right, ripped right from the comics where. You know, uh, Gwen Stacy gets knocked off and she's falling and Peter snags her. Now, she what bounces. she bounces, what kills her is that his web, for some reason, doesn't stretch to slow down the fall, but just instantly stops her, making her snap her neck. But earlier in the movie, these same webs caught a car gently uh, and stretched to save the kid and save the people in the car, uh, absorbing the impact. But even in the movie, it was all like inconsistency. In, and then you think, so I just thought that was it. I thought that was interesting that like you should look for work in the, as a science consultant on superhero movies. That's actually awesome. Right? I, 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 have, I have a quick aside before you go, go at him. I have a quick aside about Spider-Man, the amazing Spider-Man. This guy's supposed to be fucking smart as hell, and he's looking up on YouTube how batteries work. How does a battery work? <laughs> but again, like, it's it just that whole movie. Like, yeah, they just. They had a good actor and some good things going for it, and they just completely shot the bed. It was ridiculous. I don't understand how they. There was a good movie in there. There was a good movie in there, and a guy studio interfered. Yeah, Yeah, you're right, Rug Boy. This guy, uh, Kakalios, he he wrote. Remember in the movie, there was a decay rate algorithm that uh, they used to explain the 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 lizard uh, uh, how he replaced his uh, his limbs. Uh, Kakalios wrote this algorithm. It was like a real algorithm written by a scientist <laughs> for the movie. That's really cool. I, uh, yeah, no, I'll look into some science consulting jobs. Well, look, it's just another, another avenue to like <laughs> combine these things. Yeah, if you ever like, want to leave the Arctic North, yeah. he's, got some, he's got a role for yeah, it. Yeah, if it gets too cold. When I was a the- bit younger, I considered living up there, but it's, it's, it'd be tough. It's, uh, I don't know. It's I, too I'm, fucking cold, bro. <laughs> You know what though? If you like the outside and you can uh, you can make use of like your time outdoors, then you would love it. Like I again, that's all they do is go outside, oh. go hunting, go do whatever. I'm not a hunter like by by nature, but I I learned because of them. Like I can skin a seal. Yeah, you'd be. I'm sure bottom. you got to be a but, badass uh, survivalist. That's what happens when you live up there. But it's uh, I'm more of a gatherer myself. <laughs> <laughs> you bitch. You're a little uh, bitch yeah. gather. I go to Costco. Uh, <laughs> 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 I 
(laughs) (laughs) Right on, dude. This was so much fun and so fascinating. And you are a fucking smart guy. And uh, I don't know know. know why you listen to the show. We love that you listen to the show. We appreciate everything, man. Uh, For the listener, you want to plug something uh, uh, where they can find you if they want to say hi? What do you want to do? do I don't know if I want people to follow me or not. uh, Well, that's the thing. You want? My my Twitter is at Adam D. Morris, all one. Um, And, yeah, I I mostly tweet about science and comic books. So, I mean, that's uh, pretty straightforward. That's Um, awesome, dude. Well, I have the opportunity here. I just want to say, like, thank you guys very much. Um, Again, I've been a fan since I started listening to these types of podcasts, and you guys are awesome. And it's – you have a unique setup here, so keep it going. And uh, I'm happy to come back anytime you'll have me, if you'll ever have me back again. But it's, uh, I don't know, you do good work. So, Oh, dude, much. thank you so much. Look, you are thank the you. official Chuck and Nerd Podcast Science Guy Advisor right now, Dr. Adam D. Morris, PhD. Uh, and so we may, you know, time to time send you an email asking about stuff. I feel like I would love to have you come back when Aquaman comes out so we can discuss what a fucking mess it is, or maybe not. I don't know. I actually had a know. whole section written down on Aquaman and how fucked up he would be if he was actually a real person. Oh, that's so, see, that's that's uh, gonna be another show. That's when you come back. We're doing that don't. show. Yeah, marine biology is my expertise, so I actually took some time. I'll, I'll actually I'll draw if you if you if you, it's gonna be a little while off and we got till Aquaman comes out. I'll yeah. draw what I think Aquaman would actually look like. Whoa, that'd be cool. Like, oh, hey, dude, Sapien. we you know what? We're going to do that before Aquaman comes out because that's not until like 2018 if it uh, even If it out. ever does. Yeah, we, the, <laughs> if it ever comes out. Yeah, yeah no, dude, you're our welcome back anytime. This is super, super interesting. And believe me, I'm going to be uh, hitting me up for some science superhero questions as things arise. Um, anytime. Rugs, where can the people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Really Rug Boy. Just come up and say hello and fuck you. <laughs> Listener, <laughs> uh, you can uh, find our show on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, Stitcher, Player FM, TuneIn, uh, iHeartRadio. But what we want you to do before we peace out is definitely subscribe to the show in iTunes. Even if you don't listen there, it doesn't matter. Just go to jockandnerd.com slash review. Hit that subscribe. Leave us a rating and review. We will love you forever. And then finally, Anthony, what do we tell everyone? Go fuck yourself right now. No, we tell them tell a friend. Man, ah, come on, you, I've never you, said go fuck you, yourself. No, you, you never. So you, got it. you finally you got it right. Bro, do you even ah. podcast? You finally got it right. Tell a friend. Spread the geekery. Get geeky with science and comics. If anyone's in there, science and comic books, spread the show. Post it on your Facebook. So, uh, grab your friend's phone and subscribe them. Be our ground crew, our street team. Spread the Jock and Nerd podcast. Spread the word, Jock and Nerd. Spread your ass. Spread the word. Spread the cream cheese on the bagel. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Listen, this has been the Jock and Nerd podcast. My name is Abron. My name's Anthony. He's the Jock. And he's the nerd. And we'll catch you next time. Awkward pause. <laughs> 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 <laughs>